8642. That's 407 486 8642. And the password? No password. Welcome, friends. <laughs> it's it's uh, another session of. Do we have somebody else? Oh no, you're just greeting everybody. Of, uh, you're, you're greeting me. <laughs> it's another session of wake up and smell the roses. Oh no, wake up and think <laughs> clearly. Wake up and think clearly. Or should we? Or maybe it should be the other way around. It should be think clearly and wake up. Because if, and we, smell the roses. <laughs> and if we don't think clearly, we can't wake up. Or can we? Or does That's it, right. does it yeah. require thinking to wake up? Or can one wake up without thinking clearly? That's a very good question. Actually, Ooh. thinking is of the mind. And, uh, uh, enlightening and waking up is of the mind too. So you need both. Mm -hmm. I was reading this guy, this guy, uh, uh, Wessel uh, Zappe, and, and he, he says that uh, we are the mystery, thinking of itself. So it takes, uh, it takes a mind to think about the uh, mind. <laughs> so waking up is, 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 a, is a mental thing, and mind is a mental thing. So what, hap what is the mind doing while it's not woken up? What what does what is it doing? It's 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 rehearsing. It's it's uh, reorganizing data, just reformatting, or no, not reformatting. What do you do to a, a hard drive when you uh, clean it up? You see, the, it takes the the data and uh, it organizes it. What's the, what's the name for that? There's a there's, Have you ever done that to your hard drive? Yes, I Where did that you? yesterday, but. It, but then I decided to for, format the drive. Let's see. What's it yeah. called? Well, formatting de, is a de, different thing. Defragmenting. Defragmenting. So when we go to sleep, the mind brain is defragmenting because the mind is all those little things that are floating around the, mm. the, the memory, the hard drive and, the, and the, the hard memory and the RAM memory. Uh, that is the mind, the combination and interplay of a whole bunch of data. And then uh, what happens when we dream? Same thing. It's a dream. Dreaming is the, 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 the mind trying to make sense of its own experience. That's why the weirds are, the, you know, the dreams are so weird because we are kind of making reality trying to... Mm of not the mystery, the mystery of the reality. So dreaming is an effort of the mind uh, to make sense of its own experience. Oh. In a sense, dreaming is meditation. Oh. Dreaming is meditation? Yes. Oh. And what is meditation? Uh, meditation is meta-thinking. Which is the mind Make thinking about thinking. itself and its processes, the mind trying to about itself. understand itself. And of course, because the mind is reality, look at itself. When you try to understand yourself, you try to understand the world. Because there's no, there's no essential distinction between the in and the out. Uh, the distinction is artificial, rational. It's like I'm here, you're there, but. Essentially, there is no here or there. There is only one monad. Did, uh, did 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 you say when I asked what is dreaming? Then you came to the conclusion that dreaming is like meditation, and then what yep. is meditation? Because meditation, meditation is a mind trying to understand itself. Vipassana, mindfulness meditation. It, it, it is relaxing, of course. You're just, you know, inside yourself, so you, you have a tendency to relax. Or you should be able to relax, because if not, it's not real meditation, it's, it's masturbation. But uh, the, 
any meta thinking, just thinking about thinking, is a meditation. And dreaming, obviously, is the mind just reorganizing itself, images, sensations, feelings, intuitions, uh, the collective unconscious trying to make sense of itself. So it is a meditation. This is the first time I, I verbalized that, but I, I stand that, by um, statement. But if it's trying to make sense, how come it doesn't make sense, the, the dreams that one has? The reality ultimately doesn't does not have a... <laughs> the reality does not have a consciousness uh, of itself. Mm -hmm. So the mind is an instrument, an organismic instrument mm -hmm. through which reality sees itself ah. with a certain degree of clarity. Oh, but, can can you uh, join the the Zoom meeting now? Me? Get, uh, cause you're, I thought I had already. Yeah. Let's see. I am in a Zoom meeting. But you're but you're uh, hosting it because you called and it's not getting recorded. You you have to leave okay. and then Listen, join leave in, in a, join yeah, my, my meeting. Leave. I'm going to join you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Let's see. that look Here, Luis. Luis is is. I I don't hear. Why isn't working? Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. I don't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> I muted myself. That's preposterous. Oh, maybe when you join, you're, you're by default muted. Oh, yeah, so you don't say anything stupid to begin with. <laughs> All right, okay. you, have to think, you have to think first. <laughs> or maybe I said it that way. So the, No, no, I think the, my stuff says, do you want to join with me or do you want to mute yourself? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, so we were talking for the first time, you and I, verbalizing the idea that uh, dreaming is a form of <clears throat> non-directed meditation. If anything, I, let, let, me, let me parse the, the statement, all right? Uh, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say is that the dream, in the house. dreaming <laughs> is a non-deliberate non meditation. Dreaming. If if we make a comparison with a <clears throat> with a computer, in the computer you have the hardware, then you have the operating system, right? And then you have the program. <clears throat> you know, like Excel would be a program, an application. David, maybe you have to unmute yourself. Oh, there he is. I have, you have to unmute yourself, David. Send him a text. Send him a, send me a chat. Mm. Oh. Can you say something, David? 
No, we st you're still muted. Maybe I I'm able to unmute. Can he can he read can he read lips? Send him mm -hmm. a chat. Send him a chat. Unmute yourself. He do you be know able how to, to do us. sign uh, sign language? <laughs> unmute. <laughs> Ask how to unmute. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, when I go like this, mm. chat, mm. unmute, he should, or maybe he doesn't know how to unmute. Oh, he, I think he's going to see the, I think he's going to see the chat. Oh, maybe he's going to. He he exited. Text him. <laughs> it's easier. <clears throat> yes. Sir. Where is Rami? Where is Rami? Right. I'm gonna text him. Oh, wake up. Rami. I don't have Rami in my text. All right. Oh. Do you have him? Wait. Oui. Where's the I'm gonna copy and paste this message to Rami. Where is Rami? In text. There he is. Hey. <coughs> I've invited uh, Mike and uh, Francisco. All right. Let's see. I need to put the fan on. It's a little toasty here. What happened to David? I think he left us. Yeah. He went to get some coffee. <laughs> Let's see. We should call him. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna call David. Mm, let's David. See. I'm gonna get uh done. And then I'm going to call Ooh. Mm. Rami, huh? you can unmute yourself now, or maybe I have to. Let's see. How do I unmute? Ask to unmute. Hey, hola. Oh. That was. Hi. David, you're back. Rami, can you say something? Hmm? I can't hear you, Rami. You can't? Oh, now I can. Yes, I can. All right, thank you. Can I yes, we can. David, are you? There you go. Uh, now we can hear you. We can. Oh, good. We're all set then. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, how's everyone? How are you, Rama? Um, I need a breakfast, so I. <laughs> And I'll participate as long as my. You're gonna battery, make us all the hungry. Battery in the bed, that work. You're, You're gonna make us all hungry if we see you eating. Do you two have no access to food, Louis? Uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> it's getting <it's> scarce. <laughs> Especially in the cities, I feel for you all. Uh, 
All right, uh, Mr. Heidel, what are we talking about today? Hey, let me ask you a question, guys. Did you all get, anybody get my video that I sent out or not? Uh, when did you send it out? Last, early last week. For some reason, I don't know what it was, Luis, but I kept getting returns from your email address. What you need to do is to send me a, your email address so I can email you or something. My text. Uh, you know, I, it's easier for me to email than it is to text sometimes when I'm texting links and I see, I see. see. Well, well I tell you what, I'm gonna go to the chat. Oh, okay, I'll put it in there now. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, please, uh, Hiro, did you get my video? I think he is uh, talking with somebody. Okay. So, so um, um, my, my my email U S C E dot Okay, usc.ldp at gmail.com, sending to all of you. Oh, okay. It's in the chat now. Okay, I'm going to copy it and put it in my phone. Excellent. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. How was everybody's week? Very good, Hello. thank you. All right. Well, uh, we are all good. Nobody's sick. That's a very good thing. Yeah. Um, I discovered somebody new. I'm going to throw that out there. I discovered a guy called Peter Vessel Zapfe. And I don't, I don't know much about him. Uh, somebody mentioned him on LinkedIn. And I checked him out. He wrote The Last Messiah. Uh, he was... I'm going to go to... Uh, to... Uh, Wikipedia. Which is the, you know, the easiest, but not always accurate. But it says here he was... <clears throat> he was a... Uh, 1899 through 1990... Norwegian metaphysician, author, lawyer, and mountaineer. He is uh, a sort of for the philosophical, pessimistic, and fatalistic view of human ex existence. You know, anything that is not about uh, unicorns uh, uh, is pessimistic in the media. So let's, let, I think he was rather realistic, not pessimistic. The system of philosophy in line with the work of earlier philosopher. Arthur Schopenhauer, by whom he was inspired as well in the film Advocacy, the antinatalism. He said, don't have any kids. You're not, you're not gonna, you're, you're gonna perpetuate suffering. His thoughts regarding the error of human life are presented in this essay, The Last Messiah. Uh, shorter version of So, he has something interesting in, in the, his thought uh, with, where he says uh, the following, uh, four principal defense mechanisms in the human mind to avoid fa facing the paradox of uh, life and self-awareness. He talks about isolation, anchoring, distraction, and sublimation. So this is kind of a psychoanalysis of the mind uh, where he tries to see how the mind defends itself from existential uh, nihilism. You yeah. know, when, when we, we see, see all, all the suffering, suffering and all the strife and the, the lack of meaning, meaning because in, the, in reality, you know, the universe is meaningless, you know, beyond the, 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 the human mind, mind, if there was no mind anywhere to ask the question, what the hell is going on here and what's the meaning of all this? Well, the, the universe has no meaning in and of itself. It's just a whole bunch of stuff happening at random. It's like a, big, a big chaos where every so often, a self-aware uh, consciousness is able to perceive through senses and then uh, just kind of 
formulate ideas about what it perceives, input-output, and basically, there you have it, a mind asking, what the hell is this? What am I doing here? Not, not realizing that it is reality that's always been there, that never asked the question to begin with, until a mind, you know, was enough, uh, uh, it generated enough complexity and abstraction within itself to go, what the hell is going on here? I got a question, you know, the thing is, what we can is, I noticed that Rami posted a link uh, past week to a, um, not, not, not think and agnostic. It seemed to be two different things in opposition to each other. And last night, I was the first time I ever really took and did a little search to find out a definition for Gnosticism, which uh, actually means uh, to, to have knowledge of, I guess, um, your environment. And an agnostic would not have uh, knowledge of your environment, I guess, because A in the Greek represents a negative. Um, so I just wonder how you, how you guys take and interpret these two words. Well, in the technology realm, uh, we would say that we were technology agnostic and we were working in technology. We were working every day with technology. We were only able to work because of technology. And our job was supporting other people with technology, either installed by us or by others. But we would say that we were technology agnostic. That doesn't mean we didn't believe technology existed. No, it means we held no preference. Believe that what? What was that last part? We 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 did not stick our thumb on the scales with regard to one technology over the other. So, but the thing is uh, that there is something that has come to fruition that really sort of exists, you know, and I can't help but notice, that I'm sure everybody knows that they, you know, the, the legislature this past week had, uh, you know, like um, Mark Zuckerberg and, and Bezos and all these people in there. And just exactly what you're talking about, Rami, um, you know, to me sort of existed because they had um, the guy, what's his name from Cook, Tim Cook from Apple. But, but there, there was, was one person, person that was really missing that sort of controls and dominates the technology, technology market, and that's Bill Gates. Gates. You, you know, the thing is, I ask myself, you know, why wasn't Microsoft there? Because most of the um, applications, especially these big applications of uh, technology and processing, the, um, you know, data and everything are created by Microsoft. <laughs> You know, <laughs> excuse me. And, and the thing, thing is, anyway, I, I'm, I'm sort of asking, asking, you know, I guess, here we've got, got the most important guy or company totally left out. Really you know, his position on everything is that technology is going to take and control everybody, and which they're trying to push through right now. And I find it, um, I, I find that there's a lot of information that's sort of been left out, you know, for me. Me, you know, like one thing I've been looking at this past week is the fact that, um, you know, it sort of goes along with my little video that I put out um, that, um, you know, the thing is there's something more out there than just the adding up things to make, make sense. Uh, for instance, you know, if you take and look at it this past week, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but there's a fellow in Austin, Texas that... Um, made a comment to some news people, you know, that, uh, and he was carrying an AK-47 or whatever it is, that, you know, that he thought that, you know, it was all right for him to carry the AK-47. Um, or whatever it is. Same guy. But the thing is, so a guy from the news media, you know, was interviewing him, but he said he would never point it at a policeman because he says the thing is the policeman would take and, and kill them. They'd shoot back at them, okay? But the thing is, as far as the rest of the people that they were trying to intimidate, he referred to them as all a bunch of pussies, scared pussies, okay, that were quite irrelevant. Well, two days later, he goes walking up to a car, okay, and what happened was the guy in the car was fearful of him, didn't know nothing about this 
you know, know video that he made. made. So, so he was so fearful of him, he pulled out a gun and shot and killed the guy. Right. Okay. So, so the thing, thing is, to me, what I, I go back to is there's something that exists in nature which says whatever we judge is judged back to us by the measure that we put out. And, and even to the point of our own lives in many different, different ways. And, and in technology, there's no room for this because technology cannot take and identify these different situations. This here is something to me that, I don't know if you call it supernatural or whatever, but it exists in many different ways. Another way this past week that this really came out with nature is in the fact that the news media has gone on this hydroxychloroquine uh, witch, witch hunt saying, saying that it's so bad that the FDA has banned hydroxychloroquine. But on the other hand, what's happened is the doctors have gotten together that are all using it, and so many people are using it that they've come out and said, hey, this is working. And so many people have been cured because of the hydroxychloroquine. Well, to me, the thing is, when you get doctors that are working on the front line that are saying that this stuff is actually working, that this stuff is good, and, and then, then on the other hand, you have this high official in the CDC that are saying, oh, this stuff is no good. There's a problem. So the thing is, I take and look and I trust in the people that are actually working with the people on a daily basis and have a tendency to believe what they're saying. And the thing is, it just shows that how corrupt and how, how much our society is controlled by a few people, by their political views, rather than the realities of nature. And nature is one thing that in this situation here, people are cured through using this particular drug. And it's something that's been around for over 70 years. And it's also something that is causing our, 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 our not our government, but I mean our, uh, our society to sort of collapse inward financially. I mean, a lot of people think this, I don't know what the hell they think, but the thing is I, I see when I dress driving around town, that, that all kinds of businesses are really closing and, and they're not opening again. And, and there's vacant buildings being put all over. There's, there's people being kicked out of houses. There's, there's all kinds of things, all because of this one ideal of about hydroxychloroquine not being good. There's, there's been countries, especially you go to Africa. And, and the thing, thing is, in Africa, Africa, it's common use over there because of malaria. And in, in these countries in Africa, they've had very little problem with uh, this uh, COVID-19. And, and also in India, the same thing too. These, these people, they take hydroxychloroquine for the purpose of malaria, but they've not been affected nowhere near as much as the rest of the world with this same sort of thing. So this tells me, okay, that by nature of itself, one of those things again, where you put out and, you, and what comes back is that this is a great drug. And the thing is that people are being manipulated um, by the political efforts of some people, um, which to me, I, I go back to Marxist, and you mentioned Nietzsche, Nietzsche or whatever. I mean, this type of thinking, which is actually, to me, uh, something that exists from platonic thoughts. And these things are carried forward into our today's society in many different ways. And the thing is, Plato was a very young man when he took and he was recording all this stuff from Socrates, but Socrates was a very old man. And, and there was, was another man, man that never ever gets credit for anything, but the thing is, he's the one that's sort of behind the stoicism, is Antisthenes. And that also was part of Socrates' um, uh, teachings, you know? So anyway, that's what I'm throwing out. <laughs> well, you, uh, you throw a lot on a first date. <laughs> I don't know what to respond to that, other than to the first, uh, the first question about uh, uh, agnosticism and gnosticism. I guess that you, you could you could describe it as a uh, personal decision of each mind to go. I take position regarding what I know, or I know but I don't take position. Uh, you know, I I am uh, in a way I am I'm becoming more and more scientific every day. Definitely, I don't pay much uh, uh, attention to what I see in the news. As a matter of fact, I, I watch the news less and less. Um, because at the end of the day also, uh, this, uh, for example, this chloroquine or whatever you, you call that, 
It just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I don't care. It's just not part of my life. Uh, so it's not a big deal. So whether it is a good drug or a bad drug, to me personally, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. You know, the, 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 the final, uh, final words of the movie, Gone with the Wind. But... Um, I, I just don't know what to say to that, David, to tell you the truth. I don't know if there's a conspiracy or not. I don't know if it's a good drug or bad. I haven't gone through, I haven't gone through the, 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 uh, the science, the science of it, you know. Uh, I haven't seen peer-reviewed studies. I, I just don't know what to say about that. I, uh, I'm, at a, I'm at a loss to respond to that. Morning, Yoshi. <coughs> Welcome, Yoshi. Hi. Yoshi, good morning. Are, are you in Japan? Right, right, yes. What a beautiful picture. What time is it in Japan? It's 8 p.m. All right. Holy moly. <laughs> uh, so it'll be good, good evening. <laughs> good evening. So, um, you, you brought up the, uh, the idea of apathy. Uh, if, if a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, is, is apathy the, the vehicle upon which any opportunist can drive a wedge into any nation? Wait a second. Do me a favor. Will you, Rami, explain? You know, you say any apathy is the way that you can drive a wedge between any nation. Now, explain how that actually happens. Okay. Um, the driving of the wedge or the establishment of the apathy? Okay, what is an apathy? I mean, what are you... Well, I, I, if I may, before you guys start talking, let's, let's define the, the word. So I'm, I'm looking at the etymology of the, the, the noun, apathy. Somewhere in the 1600s, freedom from suffering, passionless existence, uh, from, from Latin, Latin apatia, apatia, from, from Greek apatheia, freedom from, from suffering, suffering, impassibility, want of sensation, uh, without, without feeling, without, without suffering, suffering, or having suffered. suffered. So, okay, good. I understand it now. Thank you. Apathy is the lack of emotion, the lack of emotion or passion. Well, now you can continue your discussion. <laughs> Well, the thing is, you know, the thing is, if you say that there's no apathy, then there would be no passion for anything. Unfortunately, I think there's passion in life for, um, for the things we experience on a daily basis. Yep, I agree with you. Actually, politics relies on passion, not on deliberation, not on, on uh, uh, logic, uh, no, uh, not on uh, scientific fact. I, I was actually saying the opposite. I was saying apathy is. It, it is the lack of passion with regard to something such as defense of the other with whom you may have no other relationship except, except the, the knowledge that they exist and they, they, may, they may be uh, going through a suffering. Maybe, maybe well, I can use the middle way here. I can use the Zen idea that all extremes are bad and we need to stay in the middle. So the excess of passion or the complete lack of it, apathy on the other side, so over, over passion and apathy are just as bad. And that we, we need to do is to stay in the middle with deliberation, logical thinking, uh, let's get the facts and be practical. Okay, Noam Chomsky says you can you can you can control the debate by channeling, in essence, what you are allowed to talk about. Does that make sense? In other words, you can you can be highly passionate about football, just don't get involved in politics. Well, you can say that. Listen, guys, guys, may I, may I? Because Yoshi just signed in. Well, we don't, I don't know Yoshi. I'm very interested in knowing about Yoshi and who he is and, and how life is in Japan nowadays. Can I, can, can I make this parenthesis here? Yoshi, can, can we know a little bit about you and then maybe we can introduce ourselves uh, uh, okay. individually? Um, um, well, um, 
I think I joined this session last time as well. And, and this session is actually a little bit difficult because um, you discuss about philosophy in really in detail. So there's some, you know, um, like a so-called professional words you're using. But anyway, um, I'm living in Japan and I'm just an office worker. Yes. <laughs> and um, so the reason why I joined this, this group is I'm interested in philosophy or how I think about my, or how I think about life. You're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's about awesome. me. <laughs> That's, That's wonderful. wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, well, well, and I, I'll, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I, I am here precisely to discuss exactly what you want to find out about. What is the meaning of life? What is, what is, it, uh, what is this about? What is life about? What is being, yeah. non-being? I, I, I think I have a, a bit of a, a, a pre-gaming on you, because I've been thinking about these uh, ideas and notions for the last 20 years. Mm. I'm, I'm now 61. 61. I started thinking, really thinking, in, this, in the proper sense of the word, proper yeah. study of the, the very notion of being, you know, as a human being with the world, what is the meaning of this, what is good, what is bad, what is beautiful, what is ugly. When I was about 38, it just came in because I had a big change of uh, careers, and I took it very, very wrong. I was immature at the time. I thought it was the end of the world. But this uh, existential crisis, in, in reality, it was a, a professional crisis, a career crisis that became an existential crisis because I started asking questions about the meaning of life and what is, what should I do, what is right, what is wrong. And that initiated the chain reaction. It was like a nuclear, uh, a nuclear uh, chain reaction where I started asking questions, I could not find the answers, I started reading, I was in upheaval, so the mind was grabbing for ideas and new concepts, so I was ready. Uh, so I started asking a lot of questions, I didn't have a lot of answers at the beginning, it was very confusing, but uh, through a little bit like defragmenting the hard drive, I was able to organize some ideas, some basic ideas, and I was able to see through a whole bunch of data uh, and get into the crux of the matter, the essence of the problem of the human mind, the uh, self-awareness, uh, the, the, the knowing, you know, I describe uh, human consciousness as a knowing that knows it is knowing. And that in and of itself is like looking at yourself in a mirror, one mirror in front of you, one mirror behind you, and you see an infinity of yourselves. And it, it's, it's a, a little bit, bit like that. that. Thinking about, about thinking is like looking, looking at yourself in, in two mirrors and, and seeing an infinity of different possibilities, different perspectives. Mm. David, yeah. what about you? Well, well I tell you what, you? one thing that me and, me and uh, Luis really shared in common is about the time of his awakening was 38. Mine was 40 years old. Um, and the thing is, at that point in time, I, got, I became a, I don't know, I guess what they might call, to some degree, a born-again Christian. And it seems like Louise's search has been, to my understanding, basically through... Eastern I'm a born-again realist. <laughs> All right. But I'm a born-again thinker. Right. But the thing is, I soon found out that you, you know, know that, that there was two sides to Christianity. Christianity. You know, there's a side that um, <clears throat> that Jesus and his words speak, and then there's a side that the the political uh, religious organizations speak. And there were two different things. And from this original ideal, it's progressed me into many different other religions. Uh, I'm trying to understand Buddhism, as well as um, you know Hinduism. And even you take Judaism, I look at it differently now. I look at Islam differently. Um, but I found that the, to me, the source of our Western psychology and everything actually goes back to the Greek. And I say that because even the words that we use and speak today 
the largest portion of ancient language is Greek that we use. Whenever you use the word logical, psychological, these are all Greek words that we have other words for today. And therefore, to me, the foundation of our understanding comes from, you know, the Western Greek civilization. And then you can almost take and point it more towards um, two people um, and the, and the Greek side. And then you got on the Hebrew side, you got Moses, you got Moses and then on the, on the Jude Jewish side or the Hebrew side. And then on the other side of, on the Greek side, you got, um, you got Socrates and also Homer. They both were very different, um, had different understandings, but they both are very relative to the way people think in the Western world today. And then there's also, there was one more too, Buddha too. I think Buddha has had a great influence on, on our psychology and the way that we all look at life. And, but the only thing is, even people that take up Buddhism end up to go down one of two paths, just like in Christianity. You have the path of, um, you know, people that sort of look at life as a parable versus the people that take and uh, live by legislation. This is right and that is wrong, which are two different things. And I think you have that in Buddhism, and I, I know it exists in, in the Greek theologies, but then nobody, nobody ever refers to uh, the, Greek the, the Greek teachings as any kind of theology except for them. And, you know, it's very different. But the thing is, it even comes down in today's world, and what we see today in our world is this disagreement, one saying that, hey, you know, science has everything, Okay, and the other saying, oh, no, there's a divine source that sort of is behind all of this stuff. Well, the thing is, our society is actually broken up, I believe, into divisions of one to the other. And the thing is, technology supports only uh, science in a way that um, when you do searches and stuff like that, it can only find um, what has been recorded and what the political essence of the technology people want you to understand. So the thing is, what if you have a, the idea of something of a supernatural state happening to you, this can never be recorded inside of a in technological um, recording of any kind because they're looking for everything as being right or wrong, one or zero, true or false. And therefore, that aspect of what I introduced earlier cannot, cannot exist, um, but it does exist because... Everything in the world from the beginning of time is political. And the thing is, the truth that lies in the center of politics um, that often is hard to discover. What do you think, Rami? When, when Rami, it's your turn to, Rami, it's your turn to introduce yourself for Yoshi. Yeah. Uh, who, uh, Yoshi, my name is Rami Katani. I was born about, uh, about a, a soccer ball kick. Or, or a baseball throw west of the Peace River uh, here on the Florida Peninsula in the southeast of the United States of America. Yoshi, Florida is that part of America that, well, when you consider the United States and how the world views it, Florida is that part of America where America views um, like the rest of the world views the United States, if that makes sense. We're the America of the America of the Americas. So oh. that's where I was born, in the largest and, and poorest county in the center of that state. And then I spent four years in Saudi Arabia, another peninsula, which was actually hotter because I was on the eastern coast, even more humid, if you can believe it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Japan's humid place as well. I've, I've got something to add to the conversation, if I may. And that is, when you narrow the field down to a set of acceptable topics, then you limit thought to those areas which you're willing to dominate. But the act of declaratively narrowing is the first act of power. And the reason why I state that is because... Um, Plato's cave is this wonderful analogy of, of, of people not being in reality, but being presented with the shadow thereof. And I think that, that any, any force or power or even speaker who goes, we're talking about this, or 
that's not spoken of in polite society, so to say, is is a is a reflection or reminder of the fact that um, uh, you're allowed to have all the freedom you want so long as you don't talk about certain topics, because anything that broaches out of the shadow of reality into actual reality is in a way a form of taboo a taboo established by those who would actually claim the power for themselves Good analogy I like that uh, Yoshi one question for you how did you find us did you know uh, Jairo how did you uh, uh, you... um, I, I, I found, found your group by meetup. Meet yeah, meetup, you know, sometimes randomly recommends groups mm-hmm. that you interest in, you, you might interest in. So this group was one of them. I see. I, I have another question. If I may. I'm very curious. Yeah. I'm a very curious person. <clears throat> very extroverted. Yeah, yeah. What is your most burning philosophical question at the moment? Ah, oh, that's difficult. It's not. It's not. It's not a. No, it's not a trick question. I understand, because you know we have so many questions regarding reality, and we want to know. But we have to start somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe we can break it down. Is it an existential question? Is it a uh, emotional question? Is it a logical question? Anything that is goes deep and that has your mind just reeling in, going like, I would like to know the answer to this. Um, well, maybe I understand existential question, I guess. Okay. But it's, yeah, but it's, but I'm not, you know, professional in philosophy. I'm, I understand. Difficult to break down. The, Many times we don't know. What we want to know, we we know that we have something that we want to know, but we don't know exactly what it is that we want to know. And of course, we don't know how to ask the question because if you if you, if you cannot verbalize it, it's because it's not in your conscious enough. It may be in your unconscious, in your subconscious. Something is wanting to be understood, uh, delineated, uh, uh, drawn, and described. And yet, at the consciousness level, at the rational uh, level, it, it's just not there. So we feel like there's a, something missing, but we don't know what it is. And that is a problem because it keeps knowing inside of us, I want to know, I want to know. And when you ask the question, what is it that I want to know? The answer is, I don't know what I want to know. Yeah. But we can break it down. Isn't the... Isn't the the best question uh, for that everyone doesn't question but is is uh, acting towards is uh, how to survive and how to do it all uh, without causing personal suffering or no. Evil, or, or how to be happy? Isn't, isn't that what we well, want to know? That's, that's a very good question. question. That, that is not the best question, Harrow. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. One of the things that you know, regarding that question is the fact that that's part of the Declaration of the Independence and of the United States. Um, you know, when they take and they say that people have the right to pursue, um, you know, happiness. I mean, the thing is, I think we were all born into a world where we truly um, have that right in a certain way, depending upon the circumstances that we're, the environment that we're born into. But But, but but isn't that, but isn't that uh, not just, uh, we we just not only try to make it a right, but isn't that what we're always striving for, even if there's no government, like if, if well, that's my point. That's my point, I wrote, is the thing is that everyone, when you come out of the womb and when you, you know, start seeing what life is about, there's always that desire to pursue. I mean, it's innate within all of us to pursue, ha- to pursue our own happiness. But what happens is, you know, we get caught up in our, in our own pursuits 
and, and we, we find out that there's difficulty in the happiness once we acquire the happiness. happiness. You know, just, just like myself, I was, I've was, been married like, I don't know, three or four times before I'm with the wife that I am now. And to me, I was always looking for this perfect woman that never existed. The smartest person in the room, the dog. But, <laughs> He's know, happy. The he thing doesn't is, know well, it. In our she, certain she, certain she, happiness, the thing is, we, we, we take, take and make mistakes because we don't know what that happiness actually is, you know, until we, you know, mature in this world, and then we find out we go in a different direction. Just like, you know, Louise at the age of 38 and me at the age of 40, all of a sudden we're searching for something totally different than we were in our earlier life. Ahead, did you find? Did, did you find, find it? it? Uh, all right. Yes. Happiness. Oh, congratulations. The uh, the best question, Hiro, is how do we thrive? Not only how do we thrive, but how do we build a life of thriving, while enabling others to thrive, with also your 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 catch, not producing evil. That's what do you mean by thrive? Well, uh, take, for example, the, the question of happiness. Happiness is an internal state. I can declare I am happy, and I can convince myself of that. I could be starving, I could be homeless, but I can be happy. It's done. The work is done. There's no more acquisition involved. Done. Now, the question is, how do I thrive? In, for instance, just as an example, in a, in a small C capitalist system, you can thrive by helping others do the same. <laughs> you can do Does, uh, what do you mean by what do you mean by thrive? What does thrive mean? Well, thrive means that you're you're you find yourself in a state of lacking for nothing. How's that for a baseline definition? Hey, Rami, what? What was that again? I'm saying as a baseline definition of thrive, it's where you find yourself in a state of lacking for nothing. Lacking for nothing. It doesn't exist. For some of them. Well, the thing is, you know, when you, when you talk about happiness and a person reaches a certain stage of happiness, to me, that there is, the life is constantly changing. The politics of life is constantly changing. The home life is constantly changing. Like yourself, you have a child. As that child grows through life, okay, your experiences with that child are going to be different. And the thing is, your happiness is going to be different. So the thing is, the key is to adjust to that. And the thing is, the only way that I know that I find happiness is by uniting with my own curiosity and asking sure. questions to try to understand the very moment that I'm living in. You know? I, 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 propose, I propose the following definition. Thriving, or happiness, or contentment, or nirvana, is Are they all the, the same thing? Yeah, I disagree. I don't think so. I think they're, they're all separate ideas. But don't well, have. but at, at the end of, you know, the different perspective, different ways of uh, looking at pleasant feelings, you know, just like love, you know, is it sexual love? Is it uh, romantic love? Is it uh, intellectual love? Is it spiritual love? It's love. So let's say that happiness or contentment is a, an individual subjective measurement between what is which is reality as it is, beyond the consideration of the mind, and what we th this measurement thinks it should be. The moment that we go, okay, what is, is what I think should be, then we're completely happy. Nothing is missing. We're, we're with the flow. We're flowing with life as life is, and you know, no, no criticism, no, it should be like this, or I don't understand this shit, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, so basically, basically, it's a very simple formula. It's a, simple, formula. It's a measurement, yeah. the distance between, or the, the distinction, distinction between what is life as it is, and what it should be, which is what the mind thinks, you know, about what is. And in that, there you can see that philosophy is your philosophy. 
Understanding is your understanding. Thriving is your thriving. So there you have it. So we can talk about what we think is or should be, but at the end of the day, uh, if we see reality as the monad, the whole, the, the thing in itself, the noumenon, according to uh, uh, Kant, he describes that noumenon, and it was not the first one. The Greeks already were talking about the noumenon. So if we see reality as the whole enchilada, infinite and eternal, in my, in my consideration, because it's includes being and non-being, it includes phenomena and non-phenomena, which is the noumenon. If we look at it like that, and then we see ourselves, each individual, I have you all on my screen, so we have one, two, three, four, five self-awarenesses that are all of the same reality, i.e. that reality is looking at itself through five individual organismic self-awarenesses, then we can see that each attempt to understand, each attempt to thrive, each attempt to be happy and contented is reality looking at itself with a different perspective. And because reality as a whole does not know it is doing that because uh, it is only one aspect of the whole that is thinking about the whole, then we can say that the pleasure or suffering is of each individual consciousness. It's up to you. Like the, like the, song, like the song by, by James Taylor that says, now the thing about time is that time is not really real. How does it feel to you? What do you think about it? Well, you can apply that question to any notion. Happiness, thriving, uh, politics, politics uh, uh, sociology, sociology uh, 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 love, uh, uh, fairness, uh, ethics, aesthetics, etc., etc. Et et so the first thing, the first thing that I would recommend, I, I'll give you the, the, the your turn. The, the, the first thing that I would recommend to somebody that tries to understand himself, herself, is to bring it back to one's mind. What is it that I think? What do I, what do I think? How do I understand? Because if you go by what somebody else said, uh, it might be in accordance with what, what you think or not, but at the end of the day, each mind has to decide. Now, Jairo. Luis, what do, what do you mean by strive versus be uh, ha uh, our own happiness, our own individual happiness, because Rami uh, put forth that that the big, the biggest, or the the best question is is how do we strive versus how do we maintain our own individual happiness? Is there a distinction that you can make between the two? I I would use a Buddha's description in the Four Noble Truths and in the Three Characteristics, I would say that being is striving. So the very fact that there is a, a self-awareness asking a question, that is already striving. And you can take that to the string, all the way down to the string that appears from nothing, which is the vibration of nothingness becomes a string. That is in itself some kind of an agitation. It's called dukkha. Dukkha. Uh, agitation, agitation, vibration, vibration uh, change, uh, which, which which has to do with any the permanent, permanent change, change, the whole thing always uh, changing. So, so the, the very fact of thinking is already striving. I disagree with dukkha being change. I think dukkha is unsatisfactoriness right. and yeah, the yeah. opposite to sukha, which is uh, pleasure. There you go. There you go. So that's why I say you're talking about striving. I took about dukkha. Dukkha is striving, the uneasiness of the dismeasurement between what is and what should be. Oh, so there is a difference between striving and happiness as in contentment, like happiness is being content, so you don't want to strive. And striving is, is no, I'm not happy, so I want to strive to be happy. So it's like Happiness and, and peace is a reality uh, realigning itself with itself, making a complete, complete sense, sense of itself, itself through them, through a mind. 
in, in a subjective way. way. Go ahead. Yes, Sandra. Rami. There's a, there's a fellow who stated that the, uh, the joy is in the creating, not maintaining. That, um, that suffering to a degree is introduced by way of the process of maintaining a certain order. Now, I think certain orders go very far to benefiting certain people. The, the, the externalities that, um, that are produced as a result of maintaining those certain orders that, Again, that, yeah. that creates an increasing, ever-increasing externality until eventually yeah. you get this new order. Right. Rami, you are just describing uh, with other words what I just said about what is and what should be. Order is what is. Really. Dharma. Dharma or Dhamma is the world as it is. What that which binds everything together, you know, without uh, any consideration of the mind. But so, reality so, could be in this order. There could be chaos. It, it is chaos. It's the, the only thing that, that organizes reality is a mind. The order? The, 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 well, well, they call it order, order but it, it, you know, it is what it is. You, you know, know, in, in Buddhism, Buddhism, they talk a lot about, about you know, it is what, what it is. is. Dhamma is what it is. What is in in the the in the Vedas and the the Hindus talk about you are that. And that is what is. And and it's described as Dharma, Dhamma, the order. You know, you know, the, the universe, universe, the cosmos, cosmos you, you know, know what, what is beyond the consideration of the mind. Go, go ahead, ahead, Rami. So, what, uh, I want to uh, go ahead, Hiro. What, what, what it is, but, and is there a what it isn't? Is there something that isn't? Very good question. What is is what is not also. Because if it weren't, then what is would be a picture, not a dynamic pic uh, movie. So, that in order. Make logical sense. Well, well, anyway, wait a minute. It, it also includes what is not? Yes. So, so reality is both being and non being at the same time everywhere. everywhere. Because, because if it weren't non being at the same time, reality would be a static picture. picture. Nothing would change. In, in order for something to change, something has to stop being what it is, not be, and, and then be something else. else. So change implies anicca, and it implies anatta, not being. So everything is constantly changing, so reality is both being and non-being at the same time. A, a, a good example of this is what we were talking about before. When Louise was talking about when he was 38 years old, he came to asking these questions. The thing is, before that time, the order in his life was different than after he started investigating. And the thing is, as a person grows through life, that order of life changes according to what we learn and what we find to be the reality of our own lives. And the thing is, there are so many different orders of life. Each corporation has their own order. Each government has their own order. Each person has their own order. And the thing is, we have to realize that each person is an individual actually developing their own order in their lifespan that they live on this earth from the beginning to the end when they die. And the thing is, so when you start talking about order, there is some commonality of order. If you're working for a corporation, everybody has to take and go along with the rules or they don't have a job. If you belong to a government, if you go along with the rules of the government, um, then you're not a part of the government. But, but the thing is, there's so many different ideals within inside of governments from religions and corporate ideals that causes that order to be fractured. And for there to be many different forms of that order within inside of uh, any kind of a community. Now, the thing is, the idea is to take and find some commonality uh, to that order, uh, just like, for example, electricity. You know, there was two ways originally to create electricity. One was, uh, what do they call it? by Edison, and the other one was by um, the guy that, Tesla, you know, but the thing is, one prevailed and the other didn't. So well, they were talking about the same electricity, the voltage was, you know, was in one, 10 to 20, but uh, Yoshi, I, you haven't said a thing, so, so I wanted to, I wanted to get your feeling of where the conversation is going, what, and is this something that you're, you were looking for? Is this this kind of uh, conversation, questions and answers? 
uh, or this, this is also an interesting for me. What is like, um, like basically you're talking about what is happiness, what is con how you contend some two things. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know how, how to you know um, add, add something to your to your comment. It's, I'm very interested because. I know David, I know uh, Rami, and I know Jairo, how they think and, and uh, their, their different perspectives and how they address, uh, you know, uh, reality. The questions they ask and the, and the typical answers they give. But you are an, uh, a question mark to me, and I'm very interested because not a lot of people uh, are interested in this kind of stuff, or if they are, they don't make the step to join in. And go, hey, here I am, I'm going to listen, or I'm going to give some ideas. I'm, I'm working on my, my own uh, sense of the meaning and, and uh, the sense of reality, my own epistemology. And here I am, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share, I'm going to listen, and I'm going to uh, jump in. And I'm very curious to, to get your feeling about this conversation. Yeah, I'm listening to you, but I, I'm not sure what, how to like, make my comment to you. I understand. I understand. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll try. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. great. At least we're, we're helping. We're thankful you're here. It's wonderful to have a new visitor. Yeah. To, um, to, to me, it's the beauty, the beauty of the human being trying to reach out and understand. I mean, this is the pure, pure, uh, deliberate conversation where it is polite, it is open-minded, and in here, anything is talked about. You, you were talking, Rami, about, you know, there are things we cannot talk about, and that's the, 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 the epitome or the, the, the realization of control of a mind by other uh, powers. And I say, we can talk about anything here. I, I feel I can talk about anything in here. Uh, and in an in a atmosphere of understanding, openness, uh, sharing, respect, uh, agreement, 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 agreement to disagree. To disagree. Uh, you, you touched, touched up on how how do you thrive while not uh, impeding the others? Uh, that immediately brought uh, Nicolas Chamfort, uh, a French uh, a French uh, thinker, or philosopher, or writer, and he defined uh, morality as be happy, let others be happy, without harming yourself or others. That's the true morality or the true ethics. Yeah, it was interesting to hear that how you define thrive because for me thrive was so obvious. The meaning of thrive was so obvious, but it was interesting to hear the meaning of thrive is. Um, I think Rami said, um, "Lacking to nothing." Lacking nothing. Yes. Yeah, that was you know, I I found I found as. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting concept, concept to and, define. And, and yet, yet I see a lot of people that are wanting for nothing in the material sense, sense and yet uh, 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 in the intellectual side they are completely empty, they are not happy, they are not mm. uh, complete because uh, the meaning uh, and not things are missing. So uh, thriving has to be all encompassing peace of mind like okay i got this and i need nothing on the material side on the intellectual side on the emotional side on the uh, metaphysical side on any side and that's what uh, is described as nirvana Louis, what happened <laughs> Luis got cut off. He cut himself off. Rami, can, can, you, it wasn't, yeah. can you expound on Thrive? Is it, isn't it? Uh, Guys, I have six minutes to go. I have six minutes of time left. More to a society, a thriving society, like, like or that flourish. What do you think about the word flourish? Maybe I'm confusing it with flourish. Flourishing. Well, um, I kind of like what Margaret Thatcher said in her third term as Prime Minister of Britain when she said there's no such thing as society. Now, of course, there's society. It is a thing. It is a concept. And a lot of people utilize this concept. So in many, many minds, it, it exists. But she described rather a tapestry of men and women 
of of uh, people who um, create something beautiful together. So uh, it's not looking for others, but the better way for me to respond to your question is not to ask or, or not to provide some vision, but rather to ask you with regard to your own life, how can you hieroglyph rise? Because, because it's, it, if, if there's one member of the whole which is lacking, then there's still work to be done. But that work may or may not be, I, I can't tell another how to fulfill that work. So is this meetup or is this Zoom meeting thriving and flourishing and and what happens if there's an obstacle to this and and it ends like uh my account uh, expires or something and I can't do it or or the uh, zoom uh, falls down or the internet goes out then what what will happen to us and what will we think and and uh what will we do to overcome this evil who who can answer for we oh i can only answer for myself you're right well guys i have about three minutes left and i have to go to things i want to express my uh, great, great excitement of uh, Yoshi uh, joining the, the group. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, we, I welcome you personally to our discussion group for every Saturday, but uh, I also uh, talk to Jairo quite often outside of the, uh, uh, the Saturday morning Zoom. Um, I, I think if you look at the, uh, the chat, if you look at the, sh at, at the chat, you will see my uh, email address. Yoshi, do you see it yeah. here? Uh, I, I, invite I invite you to uh, send me whatever you want. I am always, uh, always interested. You, you, you mean you send your email address via chat? Uh, send me an email. If you ah, okay, uh, okay. You can, uh, uh, I mean, whatever, I, I am open to you reaching out to me to ask anything about philosophy, metaphysics. That's my passion. Uh, I do that while I'm working, while I'm living my life. Mm. So I am uh, extremely interested when somebody is interested in this because it has transformed my life for the very better. Uh, it has matured me. The metaphysics, the, the meta thinking, the thinking about thinking has made me thrive. It has transformed my life. As a matter of fact, I have a, uh, a web page that's called uh, tricklewisdom.com that talks about this combination of practical mm. wisdom and non-practical wisdom, which is metaphysical wisdom. Yeah. Uh, and, and I also talk about a transversal way of uh, looking at life, which uses both uh, opposite perspectives. So I am excited, very excited to have met you. And I wanted to say that before I left. And, uh, and uh, I hope that we see you uh, every time in our, in our meetings. And by all means, if, if you want to send me an email and, uh, and start a, uh, a personal conversation about metaphysics and the meaning of life or the non-meaning of life, uh, I'll be uh, absolutely tickled pink. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, to you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your invitation. Absolutely. All right, guys. I have to run. I have uh, no, a okay. things to do. I wish I could uh, we'll, stay here for another couple we'll hours or three or five. We'll continue uh, the the theme of Nietzsche and and the Spoke Sutta with Luis next Saturday morning again. Or, or that's what we were trying to to get into. Like maybe we, we could get into that. Uh, uh, further in this meetup meeting like maybe okay, talk guys. about good and evil or something like that well, well there are so many things to talk about um uh, I, I enjoy these meetings uh very very much as you all know uh but now i have to go i'm sorry i can't spend any more time in this zoom uh, meeting so i send you all my uh, most respectful uh, salutes you take care
Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Bye bye. See you later. See you. We thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye. Did everybody else hang, hang in there? <laughs> oh, here, hi, Ro. Yep. Another half hour anyway. What What, what do, do you think, think Nor uh, David? About what? About striving and happiness and the end of striving. Like, what What are we here for? What are we here for? Well, that's a big old question. I, I don't think anybody really has the answer, except more that they can learn. Um, like I say, from the time that we're born and born by, uh, what's in our life? What What's here? I mean, the thing is, that's what causes us to take and explore different things, you know? You know, we strive to... You know, some people, you know, the thing, they just strive to get a period and you know, if the doctor tells them, well, you got this or that, they just follow along with everything that the doctor says. And there's other people that <clears throat> sort of question the world as they live in. And I'm one of those people. I'm a cynic because I take and I question everything. I say, is that really true or is that not true? Because I want to know what life has to offer, period. Not the life of other people's words, but the life of reality. You know, so, so <clears throat> that's, that's what I strive for through curiosity, curiosity um, by asking, asking questions. questions. To me, one of the greatest people that ever lived uh, regarding that had to be Socrates, who was always asking questions. He always wanted to know. And the thing is, through his understanding of asking questions, he found out how ignorant he really was. And he got killed for it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well... He didn't get killed for asking questions. He got killed for uh, basically not agreeing with what the government wanted him to basically believe. I mean, he had a choice to live to go along with the government, but the thing is, the, he didn't he didn't believe that the government was actually doing the right thing by asking the questions and teaching the children in the proper way. So he stood up for what he thought, and the thing is, he paid the price of death, which he. Up, Up until the time that he died, he always had the opportunity to take and reverse his, his ideals. <clears throat> and the same is true to me. I, I, look at, I look at him the same as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did the same thing as Socrates. It was no different than, than Socrates in the fact that he had ideals that were not accepted by the community. And the thing is, whenever you don't get along with your community, your community wants to get rid of you. They want to kill you. Because the thing is, they have certain beliefs and things, and either you believe them or you don't. And we're headed that way right now in the United so States. It's, so it's a, a fight between the individual and the collective, as you say sometimes? Well, I didn't say that there, but I, that's absolutely true. I mean, you have individuality, and then you have your collectiveness, which takes in everything that other people think, that you end up thinking, and you become part of their thoughts. Just, Just like, like if you believe in Nietzsche and all the things that he comes up with, then the thing is he becomes an influence and his words become part of your life. The same is true with Buddha. The same would be true with Muhammad. The same would be true with any, any religious or any non-religious person that would come along. So who is right in between a fight between the individual and the collective whatever, uh, or, or society, or a tapestry, uh, is there a way to determine who who is right and who should prevail, or or should you just let them fight it out, and it seems like the collective will always win? Well, the collective think, will always win because you have more than one person. First of all, there's the case where the group is wrong and the individual is wrong. Um, so there is there is an end. Uh, it's always the same. But the the, the, the target of for whom the end is um, is done. And I'm talking about the true end, not the stated end. But the the the, the end is glory. Glory is the end. Okay, glory is the ultimate purpose to to, to to make or provide, to act in such a way 
have a quality of character where, where universally someone can look at that and it, it, would, it would move you to tears to, to witness uh, uh, such action. Um, now, is, is it glory for personal gain or pleasure? Is it, is it glory for, for uh, a concept such as a nation? Is it, is it glory for, for the creator of the universe? So uh, some people can say that they're doing things for God, and what they mean to say is they're doing it for themselves. Where's my husband? Yeah. Don't trust me. I don't know. I, I sort of disagree with you there, Rami. I think that people do things not only for glory. I think that that's the, the nature of a person is to do it for their own glory. I mean, that's why we do all things, you know. I mean, it's, we come out of the womb and... You know, we're trying to take and make ourselves happy. We're doing it for our own glory of the things, whether we are addicted to, you know, game playing or even philosophy or whatever. That there, in a, in a sense, is for our own glory to take and, and learn, learn these things. But the thing is, I believe there's something beyond that. Um, and I think that it lies in curiosity, which goes back once again to Socrates uh, asking questions. And the thing is, Socrates, in asking his questions, he found out that there was a lot of dissent difference, you know, between, um, what do you say, collective beliefs versus individual beliefs, and that he tried to take and, you know, incorporate, you know, the, I, just the idea of asking questions um, into a society where, in general, it's not accepted. And that's in this, to me, I go back to even Jesus Christ. I mean, he was crucified because of the fact that the people could not ask questions about the things that he was actually teaching, and therefore uh, had no understanding of what he said. It was totally foreign to them. And the same is true with Socrates and what happened in Greece and why he was executed too. Because the thing is, they had no understanding and of what was going on. He would see things in a totally different way. The unfortunate thing is, Plato, which, which was, was his youngest student, student, he was only in his 20s when Socrates, Socrates died, ended up uh, being the, I guess, the, the bearer of his understanding of Socrates and not in, in an older perspective and becomes dominant throughout history and throughout time as to the way that we all in the Western world perceive ideologies of different sorts, which I think is a travesty myself, but, uh, you know, that's just me. Because, because the thing, thing is, when a person is young, you know, they, they see things through their own desires rather than their own reality, rather than the realities of the world. And, and just like, like, um, like, like Louise coming when he was 38 years old, come to the conclusion that he needed to make a change in his life and myself too, that you start to see things differently and the world looks differently in that perspective. And you don't look at uh, so much as your own glory but um, the glory of what actually exists in life itself and what is out there to learn and experience, you know. So that's the way I look at it. What happened to Iros? He left? Meh. Uh, how, about, how about our new friend from Japan? Is he still here? I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering if you left. I don't know, for some reason, your your picture or the background that you have is not showing up on my computer. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, sorry about my camera is not working today. Right. Well, that's quite all right. You know, I just... Not a problem. So, what do you think, Rami? I mean, you you, you seem to have a pretty diverse thought pattern. Oh, uh, right. I do. It comes from having very diverse parents. And having lived in very diverse places, uh, a friend of mine said that if you wanna if you wanna gain wisdom about a thing, some thing, that uh, that you go to the edge of it, like you, you, uh, the continental divide, uh, where the land meets the ocean, you spend time there, and and you try to pick up the cues from from your environment. Um, Malcolm Muggeridge thought that uh, that we were always in some way, receiving little whisper sort of ideas. Um, 
that, that, that aren't necessarily uh, magical or metaphysical, but rather they're just opportunities to pick up on things. And the question was, are we, are we keen enough or sensitive enough to, to, to actually pick up on those things? Nope, you don't even pick up on the cues from your wife. Of my wife. <laughs> I don't know. If, I think David got that. Yeah, it looks like Hiro got that too. Uh, well, the thing is, you know, like I was saying earlier, um, Rami, um, you know, when I was talking about the hydroxychloroquine and that fellow being shot, I think that you know, you go back to, you know, there's this common old saying that whatever you put out comes back. Judge, and you will be judged, you know, by the same measure that you put out. I mean, these are common sayings that were, um, you know, it's not only a Christian saying, but it's a Buddhism saying, too. And the thing is, um, you know, Buddha demonstrates that, uh, Guatemala Buddha demonstrates that through, you know, some of his quotes, and they reflect that. It's also reflected in Judaism, and it's also reflected in the Greek, um, you know, the Greek theologies as well. Uh, more, more so in the Greek theologies, I think, than any, any other one. But, you know, the thing is, it's something that is very, very real that allows people to see um, the difference between, you know, science and reality. You know, just like I use this example with the hydroxychloroquine, you know, um, you know, to me, the thing is, if you look at the people that are actually working and using it, um, you, th you, you can only come to one conclusion is that it, it has it works under certain circumstances whereas the other hand if you listen to the political nature of it you know the thing is it's obviously uh, something that has to be approved through the political organization um, before it can be actually used <coughs> in this country here and you have two different ideals so the thing is the person is left to which one do you actually believe and the thing is, when you go along, a lot of people don't realize when they go along with one or the other, you know, it causes other damage in our society, you know. And especially this particular instance and this particular definition and its re reality as to how it's working. Because, you know, they're worried about people dying from this, but it's causing deaths of many, many different sorts and in many, many different ways in that businesses are going out of business that are never going to come back, that are going to destroy families, you know. And just like, you know, I, I couldn't help but notice this past week, everybody here, they know Morgan and Morgan, which is a local attorney's organization. And the thing is, they have an advertisement. John Morgan put out a, a, an advertisement this past week for getting clients uh, regarding malpractice inside of hospitals. And inside of this, this advertisement, he, he makes, makes a statement, statement there's over 200,000 people that die in hospitals in the United States because of malpractice inside of the hospitals. And I'm thinking, here, you know, this is an issue that um, is not at the forefront of our news, but yet on the other hand, all this stuff with uh, this coronavirus is causing everybody to be fearful. Well, to me, I've always known this fact, so the thing is I've always been skeptical about, about hospitals, hospitals and doctors, doctors too, because of this, if they, if they just, you know, if they, they diagnose you with one thing and you have something else, else I mean, it, it can kill you. And that, that happens. happens. And, and he points out over 200,000 times a year. I mean, that's a lot. But yet the thing is our political people pay no attention to that because the thing is the doctors are, um, are puppets of the, you know, the um, drug industry. So, so the, the thing, thing is, to me, that there is a reality that, that you know, never, never gets discussed, but it's there for somebody to look at in behind, um, you know, the way they're living, their day-to-day -day life, you know, to see these things. So I don't know. I think Cairo will appreciate this idea. And thank you for stating all that, David. Um, for, for, the, for the want of the change of an operator, so they're basic mathematical operators, uh, plus, minus, and also when you're dealing with logic gate arrays, and, and, or. Very basic operators. We all understand the difference between and or or. And the reason why you see me perhaps as a diverse thinker is because we are constantly, from even a very young age, asked to become judges before we are fit to judge. 
and and, and and things, things are defined in the or with by the or operator. So, so you, you can, can you can either be on the side of faith, hope, and love, or you can be on the side of uh, double blind science. Right, <laughs> and that's a political act to say that you have to choose. When in reality, don't we all want to be on the side of faith, hope, and love, and not or and double blind science? Right. Well, the thing is, it depends. I never, I never thought of it the way you said it, but that there. Your, Your and or is, is a is, is a very very good analogy for a lot of things because when a person takes and uses the word and into their life, that means they're incorporating whatever the and is. Where you have the or, and if you have an or and you're looking at something in two different ways, you're actually in the center of the or. I mean, of the two different things you're looking at. So therefore, if you maintain that or most of your life. You're constantly looking at a balance and an understanding of both sides, rather than if the and is in your life, you're automatically incorporating that into whatever the belief system may be. I like, I like, or better than any of the three. There's and that demands that you take all of them. You can't ex. Cannot exclude any of them. Then there's the or, and then there's the exclusive or. That's what politicians want us to do, to, to, to take one and exclude the other. So you choose between one and or another, but you can't have both. But I like the middle or. That allows you to take one and the other if or you can take one and leave the other so you have an extra choice there so that when you go to a restaurant and and you're asked by the waitress uh do you want that uh or or like you have a, a an extra little plate of vegetables or whatever the do you want that vegetable uh item to be corn or mashed potatoes, I say both because my or allows me to accept both, all of them. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, or, um, so, so you respond to the, to the, uh, to the waitress with, uh, uh, or how about you just give me everything you got? Is that your response? It's that's a negative, negative because it, it negates the 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 uh, the option to choose in a way. Yeah, I'd like to introduce the idea that um, well, how 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 the the process or the the, the impressment of that frame, uh, the application of the or over time iteratively, is is the process by which ideas are swapped out. So let's say you have a truth. And then you've got, uh, you know, people are like, oh, man, we're never going to make a profit with this truth. What we need to do is insert our truth. That's a narrative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. So how are we going to replace the truth with our narrative? Well, we'll use this iterative process of, 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 uh, of media messaging, and we'll use techniques such as repetition uh, because... And, and then, and then the next, next thing you know, your your entire culture goes from maybe having majority truth to having minority truth to having eventually, you know, only the outliers having truth, and the the truth for the society becomes the narrative. Right, well, that's happening here. <laughs> Certainly, but it's happened in, in other places too. I know it's normal. You know, that's just so like is that is that an example of of untruth or false truth or and is that is 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 that deception is that something we should strive to not allow to happen for our society to flourish well the thing is you want to know the truth i mean the truth you know what do they say the truth will set you free the truth is something that goes along with as far as i'm concerned with nature in itself, just like I was talking before about judgment. 
you know, you, you can, can take, take that, that word and, and that phrase, phrase judge not for whatever judgment you judge is going to be judged back to you. And, and like I say, that there is positioned in many, many different religions and beliefs. So the thing is, it is something of nature. So it requires a person to take in when you're uh, deciding what you want to believe, if you want to accept the hypnosis or whatever, to question it. And if you don't question it, then you become part of it. And the thing is, that's why I, I say so much that we need to always ask questions and unite through our own curiosity different things that are in front of us. And the thing is, what it does, it develops a person's own individuality rather than a collectiveness as to whatever the narrative may be. You see, that's the problem with collectivism is because anybody can make up any kind of narrative. And the thing is, if you believe that narrative, you're going right down that line. If it's a lie, you're going to get sucked into it and your life is going to be somewhat miserable. A corporate Corporations, that's their ideal. That's what they do. Is they create narratives for you to buy their products. The thing is, what things that they say are not necessarily true, but the thing is, if they convince you that what they're saying is true and you buy their product, they've achieved what they want to do. And the thing is, governments do the very same thing too. And the thing is, it's just it's part of nature. It's part of the nature of human beings. And that there is the big divide in Christianity. The thing is, the huge divide in Christianity that separates it but, but yet, yet it teaches, teaches both parts, parts is that when, when people, people say that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, okay, it presents an ideal that his death replaced their sins. And the thing is, when, when you believe that, okay, then you no longer can take and look at the four as a because of my sins. So the thing is, what happens is that gets shut out. And the thing is, the the, the ideal of replacement becomes the whole and the understanding and the meaning. And with that, nobody ever reads what he actually says and how it relates to the actual life of people. So, you know, that's existence. He talks about existence and he, that's why he says he speaks in parables. But the thing is, people do not read his, his teachings in parables. They read them as a literal body to justify the fact that he died on the cross for their sins. Go ahead, so, uh, that was an excellent illustration of the idea that you can have um, someone could be speaking 99.9% .9 the truth. And with that tip of the 0 0.1 or the 0.1% or the, even the 0.001% uh, so long as someone wants to introduce a lie into the body, once that lie becomes accepted, then it becomes the tip of the wedge to eventually make it all the way to the other end so that what you have is a minority truth-based society. And amongst those, you see poverty, you see, you know, want of knowledge, want of, want of food, want of shelter, all, all the, all the things that we would, uh, uh, that, that, that would that would cause people just to want to be able to survive. And in fact, not only are we in a society where that's happening in an obvious way, but we've been in a society where that's been happening as an ongoing process. Well, it goes back to the beginning of time. So what do you think, Yoshi? Uh, um, well... So, so, so your question, question is, um, sorry, so can, can you can you repeat your question? He just he said, said a few minutes ago. Uh, who whose question? Your um, uh, uh, so Yairo. Yes. I think you you, you question that. Um, sorry, I think you, you questioned something a few minutes ago, like. Something about striving, yeah, how we happiness versus right the individual versus the collective, uh huh, or something like that. I guess so. Um, so I was thinking about it, but it's, um, I think he questioned some is there any examples of like. Um, oh, oh, sorry, sorry I, I forgot. forgot. Um, 
So the whole mind has popped out from my head. So please go on. <laughs> That's normal, by the way, Yoshi. Yeah. Yoshi, are you familiar with Igikai? Igikai? What is that? What did you say, Igikai? What is that? I, 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 uh, it's a Japanese word. Igikai, I, maybe you are mistaking some, something else. Let's see. Maybe Luis Del Pino uh, uh, knows a little bit about it. I, iki, okay. Ikigai? Ikigai. Ah, ikigai. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Why well, I spelled uh, I pronounced it wrong. Ikigai. Yeah, it, it's it's Japanese word. Yeah, ikigai is like um the the uh, it's basically contentment of life. Contentment. Basically. Yeah, basically. Um, it's maybe it's a little bit different, but it's like, uh, how how you how you live your life happily, happily, kind of that. It's it's there's no direct translation from Ikigai to English words though. Yoshi, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. In in Japan, there, um, what? I mean, you, you had you have your own religion type things that you they teach. You know, I mean, do they have churches to have, um, you know, uh, temples or some sort of, you know, what kind of morality in Japan? What is the foundation, I guess, of the morality of Japan? Is what I'm asking. Um, I think the basis of our religion is based on Shintoism. Uh huh. But um, I, think I think that, that many, many like uh, modern, modern people, people are losing the notion of religion because we also like celebrate Christ like a like a Christ um, Christmas, and, and we also celebrate like Obon, which is uh, um, the some of some some of the weeks of summer, which. Um, like to to remember about to to remember about your ancestor. There's some weeks to yeah, which is called obon in, in here, and this is this is based on Shintoism. So such such examples. So we also like celebrate Christmas, and we also celebrate obon, and we also have like a New Year events. Mix that, that was like, like Christianity, Christianity or something. So, so we, the old religions, religions are mixed up here. So we, so any Buddhism in your area? Yeah, yeah we, we also, also have Buddhism, Buddhism temples, temples, and, and some, some some people go to Buddhism temple in New Year, and, and some, some people go to shrine, which is based on Shintoism. So it's really mixed up. And also, the thing is, is your country too. Um, uh, oriented around family, where mainly your mother and father stay together, and you know, like your grandma and your grandfather stay together, so that you know you become one group of family that sort of helps each other along as um, as a group. Um. Yeah. Um. Traditionally, we we help like our grandmother and grandfather. I, I think, think it's, it's just the same as other, other countries. countries, but our society also has a problem of um, isolation, that uh, the families are not helping each other. Okay, so that is happening there too, along with like what is happening here too, where it seems like there's more separation within the family, uh, where families are really not united together uh, and working together as a unit but are more divided in their own ideals and separation and sometimes yeah. become adverse to each other. Right, right. I think, as ha I think it's happening as in America as well? Yes, same thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the same is happening here. I see. Welcome, Mike. Mike M. in Chicago. Good morning, everybody. I'm good, thank you. I 
I don't, I don't want to interrupt the conversation. The conversation. I, uh, I'm calling. Uh, just, just wanted to listen in, and I was I was on another meeting, and it's interesting. We're talking about the idea of unity or union um, among family, and uh, I just want to listen a little bit more about that, and perhaps uh, learn more about the causation behind uh, that isolation. That I believe was it, Yoshi. Nice to meet you, Yoshi. Nice to meet you. Uh, Yoshi's in Japan. Oh, yeah. very good. Oh, beautiful. I mean... <laughs> beautiful. Wonderful. Wonderful. I, like the, I like the picture there. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Isn't it a miracle? We're talking about, yeah. you. We're talking about yeah. unity and isolation, but yet we're speaking live to one another on different sides of the planet and, and uh, very much unified. Mm. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's two things that are facts, and then there's two things that are fictions. And if you have to choose between which one to drop, I think the, the answer to that question is clear. The facts are families and communities, and the fictions are states and corporations. Yeah, I'd go along with that, but the only thing is states and corporations seem to have a tremendous amount of power now. <clears throat> also through the division of using, you know, Facebook and all the technological things that are out there to allow people to take and say some things that may be, you know, not so cohesive, such cohesive words, um, but are things that normal people just experience and they're not accepted anymore the way life is and it sounds to me like in uh, japan they're experiencing the same type of divisions that we are here in the united states and probably the same thing in europe as well um, now yoshi i got another question for you um you know like over here we hear a lot about george soros and he has a group of people that are really out there trying to take and create a um, globalism, I guess you might call it. Um, do you hear much in, in Japan there about a guy named George Soros? Uh, George what? Sorry. Soros. Last name is S-O-R-O-S. He's the one that brought the British pound down and made fortunes from Great Britain by crashing their society. And it seems he wants to do the same thing to the United States. He's putting all kinds of money into the different, um, you know, groups, um, you know, charitable groups, making twisting words to the point to where, you know, things that he's saying are just the opposite of truth and therefore dividing our country in many different ways. I just wondered if the name George Soros was visible over there in Japan at all. Or just a foreign name to you? For me, it's, it's first to know about his name, but maybe um, George Solos. Let me ask. Let, let me ask Google. <laughs> this 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 may be, if I may say, this is interesting. If I may say, yeah, uh, uh, this is interesting, and I I know I'm not catching the last bit of the conversation. I, the only thing I can gather from this conversation, but what is the total subject of the conversation? The total subject? Oh, oh, uh, oh. hello? Yes. Well, uh, there's no subject. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, but, but, uh, I, I'm, but, uh, I did, uh, put this in, in meetup. And, and it did have a topic. That's okay. I just, I, it's, it's all right. right. It, it, it does, does have, have a topic. topic. Yeah. The, uh, like, um, like, uh, Luis Del Pino, uh, he, he suggested, suggested I, I look at a, at a video, video yes, on, on, on thus, thus, yeah. thus spoke Zarathustra in, in Nietzsche. And, and, and that, that sparked my interest because it, it um, because, uh, the, that character. Zarathustra, uh, he he's kind of like a Buddha in that he he retired from society and for ten years and came back very wise because uh, he, he had the urge to to share his his knowledge and 
And, and so, so in, in that, 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 that book by Nietzsche, Nietzsche there is, I guess it's like a conversation. conversation. Maybe it's like an Upanishad kind of thing. thing. And, and I haven't read it, but, but that sparked my interest. interest. And, and, and then, then I investigated further, further and, and, and it sounded, sounded like this Zarathustra character from uh, Iran, Iran or Persia or wherever, it, is, 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 uh, it goes farther than the modern, modern scholars ad, want, want to admit, admit like they, they, they say he's from the 6th century BC, but then others say, no, he, he's, he's got to be farther back, back like, like uh, a thousand, thousand or, or 1500 years BC, and that he's, his uh, philosophy, Zoroastrianism is the, is the root of, uh, of all others, like it goes, uh, well, well, actually, it sounds like it, uh, he, his, his philosophy, philosophy wanted, wanted wanted it this way, way but then uh, uh, another faction went east, and and, and that became the Aryans that, that went into, into India to form Hinduism, Hinduism. And, and and that's, that's why uh, the, the language in in Iran is similar to Sanskrit because, because they, they have the root, and, and then and, and then another, another faction went west and to form the Greeks and. And uh, maybe Iraqians and Macedonians and whatever, and Minoans and everything else. Well, they're, they're just supposed to be an Indo Aryan root to uh, many languages. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's great. I love that history. Uh, does anybody have any? Uh, uh, would that be some of the information that I know? Uh, 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 some, some information, information I'm, I'm seeing, seeing uh, a chat, chat going, going through. through. Uh, would okay. I just look at that chat as far as uh, more information on that, that, that history? Uh, maybe uh, Rami, shared Rami shared some things. Rami? Is that, yeah, is that Rami, Rami. I, uh, Rami, excuse me. <laughs> I just sent you the link to the description is all. Uh, okay. that, that gave you resources that you can read off the, uh, the conversation. But the conversation okay, itself is the, is the resource. But, I'm, <laughs> but we could try uh, this topic again next next Saturday morning if people like it. I guess. I, I'm, I'm curious to know, Mike. Uh, you're you're from Chicago, or at least you're living there now. And uh, Chicago has a you know you you're 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 in the third coast of uh, of the United States, and you guys have a, a certain sort of special. Um, so let's say a uniqueness uh, in your part of the country. And when you speak unity, I mean, you're right there in the middle in the, the largest metropolitan, I think the Great Lakes area is something like 55 million. So it's the largest metropolitan or, or mega region of the United States. Uh, so, so certainly you're working out the, the, the fine details. And I'm, I'm curious, uh, well, like where did you leave off in your last conversation that you might want to um, bring to this one so that so that you have a different set of perspectives uh, to hear those ideas and perhaps respond. Well, I think one of the areas that uh, the meeting that I was the meeting that I the meeting that I was in uh, we put aside uh, uh, any type of uh, topical controversy so we can focus on perhaps uh, either. Uh, some, some sort of, of any, any, any type of politic, anything, anything else outside of that. There was always a different type of meeting. It was actually a 12 step meeting. Um, so I've been sober since 2002. So I've been frequenting these meetings daily for, for quite some time. So it's a different type of meeting, but unity did come up. Uh, the idea of being in union with, with, with all, with reality, essentially. Uh, you, you can, can fill, fill in whatever you'd like to as far as reality is or, or, or God or religion or, or philosophy, psychology, whatever the case is. It doesn't matter. But the idea of, uh, of putting aside any type of divisional uh, topical controversy so we can really be in harmony with one different type of format, of course. Right, but, but, but I, I think, think if I may say, just in one comment, would be that there is uh, uh, so much information, and I'll just say information, that it's very difficult for us to, I think, 
wherever we are on the planet uh, to really be able to have that type of unity or understanding or we are we are together um, you know just, just a comment, comment you know, you know so, so that anyway so I'll leave that there that's, that's, that's so the thing so, is me, Mike uh, I'd like to say something is that you know, in regards to that, I love that background of what you were talking about in unity. And one thing that I have found, and I say this over and over, you know, we end up uniting through uh, questions. When we take and ask questions in life, okay, the thing is that comes from our curiosity to understand and to know something. Um, and the thing is, I think that should be at the forefront. It's at least for me, it's at the forefront of my life. To, to where when I'm indulging in different conversations with people, I'm always asking questions to learn about what they have to say, what their ideals are. And from that, I learn myself. And one thing that I've learned uh, really from the word curiosity, I don't know if you read scripture or anything like that, but if you go into the, into the Bible, okay, and everywhere we're in the New Testament, it says Lord, okay? The word for Lord in the Greek is curios okay and the thing is there is no curios or curious is not a greek word it comes from latin or english but the thing is i think it is a remnant of um the word lord of the way it's used in the new testament because the thing is if you stop and think about it when a person prays okay praying means that a person is being united with something Okay. okay, and, and the, the thing, thing is, like, like if you, you use the word curiosity, okay, okay when you're, you're curious and ask a question, if, if you're talking to somebody, if you're in nature, nature no matter where you might be, okay, and you, and you get, get an answer back, you become united with that person, uh, with, with that environment, environment, with wherever you're at. at. So, so to me, at the forefront of my life now, I have this ideal of uniting with uniting through curiosity and it brings me to the existence of the present whenever i do this and the thing is i can take and break things down too and analyze by my curiosity saying well you know this is what's going on here and this is what's going on here it allows me to take and make decisions that may not be politically correct and they may not be in agreement with somebody else but, but they're, they're in agreement with, with what is existing in my life and asking, asking that question at that moment, moment you know. That's, that's just the thought I had, you know, when you mentioned that, that because it sort of rang a bell for me. <laughs> that's great. Um, oh, I got to take my wife to the bathroom. I'm just continue to listen in. Thanks, uh, David. That was very uh, uh, helpful. And and one, one of the areas, areas that uh, I've been listening to lectures and, and, and we've all heard of what, what that word curious reminds me of is also that, that idea of uh, obviously open-mindedness, but also that, you know, what, what's, what lately I've been thinking about, David, is, is the idea of intention. Uh -huh. is, that, is that idea of, it's the idea of, hey, what is the inner language if you will what's, what's that, that inner dialogue that conversation the intention that that uh that, that openness to receiving well and, let me you know a couple of weeks ago actually about a month ago let me explain something i think that through our curiosity and the result of our curiosity actually uh, you know is an individual thing it's not collective at all and for instance um when was it it was about a month or so ago um, that I had, I woke up in the middle of the night because I heard a noise in my family room, you know? So I go out and I look around and I, I couldn't find anything at all. So I go to bed and the next couple of nights we ended up hearing another noise in the, in the family room. And I thought, well, man, it's gotta be a mouse. So I went out and got a mouse trap. Okay. And the thing is we set mouse traps around the house, never caught a mouse. And then finally one night, I heard another loud noise, you know, and um, once again, I got up and looked around and didn't see nothing, but I was sure it was a mouse, but I couldn't see any mouse drippings. Usually a mouse would take a crap around your house somewhere, and I couldn't find any. And then um, a couple of days later, okay, I noticed on my desk that I had a little sign called, and it said, praise the Lord, okay, had fallen off from the window. 
And because I do word studies and everything, it's the one that reminded me that, you know, praise, when a person praises something, you become united to it. And if it's another person, I mean, and you praise, I don't care who it is, say Barack Obama, you're saying that, you know, what you think he is doing is really good and really perfect, and you're uniting with him. Um, but the thing is, this here was praise the Lord. And the thing is, it caused me to automatically reflect on the, the word Lord in Greek, because I do so many different word studies. So then it says to me, unite through um, curiosity. Isn't, Isn't that fascinating that, that, that the word Lord, um, now, now why, why, why is it then that when, when, when I think of Lord, um, obviously, obviously I think of authority. authority. Right, right. Well, uh, the thing we even thought that, that, I mean. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I understand that. Uh, I understand that there's a difference between the root of the word and what, we, what we're actually using. Why, why is there a connection between authority? Am I right in the assertion that the interpretation, interpretation of Lord today would be a position of great authority, correct? Oh, that's Why true. would we go from, in your opinion, what would be the, uh, the, 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 the connection, perhaps, between curiosity and authority? Well, there is no connection. Well, there I is. Think there is. I think there is. Well, there is. But the thing is, you see, biblical, once again, like I say, I do word studies. And the thing is, the word in Hebrew, okay, for the Old Testament for Lord, it's not, not the same. same. The thing, thing is, the, the English translation in Greek versus the English translation in Hebrew is two different things. The word translating to, and what the thing is for me, it is for curiosity, because of the fact that Lord in Hebrew for the Old Testament actually means uh, Jehovah. Jehovah is the word that's used there. So when you take and look up the word Jehovah as a definition, what is Jehovah? Jehovah is existing. In other words, existence. So, so, really, so, so, so that's interesting. So not a uh, Jehovah would not have been uh, God, so to speak, or, or a deity would simply be, uh, help me help me understand the difference. What's the difference between God and Jehovah? God and Jehovah. Well, the thing is, there's several different words that in Hebrew uh, use, are used for the word God. Elohim, El, Adonai. I mean, they use several different words and they each represent something different. But, but the thing, thing is, in the Hebrew Bible, Bible by self-definition, self if you go back to what Moses said, he said when he was going into um, Egypt, he said, God, he said, what in the world am I going to call these people? What am I going to say to these people? What is your name? You know, and God says to him, I am that I am. Well, the thing is, when you translate I am that I am, it means um, he exists. God is existence, period. And the thing is, if you take and look at the ultimate authority in life, it is existence. It is existence. That a person actually lives. It, you, when you live in the world, your environment is your controller at that particular moment. Whether it be your government, whether it be, um, you know, say in my situation, a mouse, you know, that there was all part of my communications. And the thing is, with that existence, okay, and the thing is, when it says pray to the Lord, and I'm taking and uniting with my own curiosity, I'm uniting at that moment with existence, okay? We both can, which one first? No, no, I, I thought, he, I thought uh, Rami was saying hello, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It's all right, I, I, that's what I want to say, finish his thought, and then I'm reserving a space after him. Okay, go ahead, Mike. No, no, I was just saying hello to, uh, to Rami, please. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I thought he was waving. But, but I'll have, have something, something to say, but I want to hear what Rami has to say. <laughs> Let's make sure David completed his thought. Did I? I think I did pretty much in the fact that, you know, the way I look at, at God, okay, I look at God as existence as the original definition in the Hebrew language, as I am that I am. And the this thing is, is wonderful. When you say Lord, okay, and you talked before about some superior being, nothing is more powerful than existence. Because, because the thing is, like, even right now, we have a hurricane coming up to the east coast of our country. We have no, I have no control over that. That thing could vary off to the left and come through here. It's going to be in existence. It is an existence of nature and the universe of something that has more power than me and actually is the Lord of my life. So when I take and I'm looking at different words and different things like that, the words that I speak 
I actually become my own Lord and my own life. But the thing is, only through uniting through curiosity, which is existence, okay, can my the ideals in the world that I live in actually change. And then it does change because if there is a process, I believe, that happens from the time a person is born into this world until they die. Because people never stop. Uh, looking, looking for answers. answers. And, and when you're looking, looking for answers, answers, it's your curiosity leading you. And, and everybody's curiosity is going to be different because of your life exposures are so different. different. I know, I've i lived, lived in Chicago, Chicago but I've never lived, lived in Chicago. So each one is different. Go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say it's a wonderful word, curiosity. And uh, I've been told in therapy sessions when I'm describing a, uh, a particular, particular issue or problem by a professional uh, to to be uh, to, uh, the, the, the therapy was to be curious let's take a look at that let's 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 and and also what I love about that word as well is is and and uh, is the idea of is science uh, very much isn't this the curiosity of science to be able to wonder and, and philosophy. philosophy. Alan, Alan Watts mentioned that his, uh, that I, I love a, a line he said about philosophers are just, you know, they're just uh, uh, yokels that love to gawk at things. Yeah. You know, to be curious, to, to, to wonder uh, what is happening and how does that work? Yeah. Isn't it fascinating that when you have a mechanic, for example, that, uh, 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 when you have a mechanic that is, uh, uh, when you have a mechanic, anyway, a mechanic is, is very curious about and tinkering around with different things. So I love the word curiosity. And, and well, curiosity works in everybody's life. You know, there's, there's no place that curiosity does not exist. And it becomes the fruit. I mean, our curiosity leads us to the fruit of our lives as well. You know, and the way I look at, um, you know, as you were talking about all these other people, Anymore, the way I look at my own life is that I'm sort of like a drop of water in the river of ideologies. And the thing is, I've been placed in this, in this ideology for a period of time, from the time of my birth to my death. But inside of this here river, there are many instructors, there are many people that I can take and reach out to and learn from and ask them questions. Even though, one thing I learned a long time ago, even though somebody is dead, Okay, if, if their, their words are out there and they're published, you, you can, can actually take and learn and get the spirit of that person from the words that they published in the past. And, and the thing is, to me, I like to look at the great ones. ones. To me, the great ones are like Homer and, and, and Socrates and also Jesus Christ and Antisthenes. I mean, there are many that are there. And in the beginning was the word. Oh, yeah, Moses, too. He's another one, too. But, but the thing, thing is, I don't look, look at them as a scientific, well, this is right and this is wrong type of thing. I look at them all with curiosity to understand, you know, what, what were they trying to take and say? What is actually being said in these words? Because when you read somebody else's words or when I read somebody else's words, I'm reading them through my mindset, not necessarily theirs. So the thing is, you end up, I end up coming away from reading other the material the, the way, way I want it to be read, read not, not maybe the way that they intended it to be said, said you know. David, <laughs> do, you, do you think that in the beginning was the word that that means that that before there was any any material things that in order to create them it word or thought or design had to come about so that the universe was created by words. Oh, it was. There's no doubt about it. Let there be light, let there be this and that. And so it was, and it was good. And so that means that the word is logos, as in, and that Jesus is the word. And then what about? E, uh, so does, that means that our thought is powerful. Thoughts can become things. So we have to be careful about what we think. 
And so if we think about something like, say, if we think too much about death, we could die. <laughs> if we think about, uh, about cancer, we could get cancer if we think about it too much. If we think about evil, we could become evil. That happens. That happens without question, Hyro. Because like I said, no matter what religion you're talking about, they all have the same thing of whatever you measure, will be measured back to you. And this, is, this goes into the Hebrew religion, into the Greek stories, um, into, I don't know, just, just about everything that you could imagine. And even in Buddhism, Buddhism does the same thing too, with the same common thing. So the thing is, the reality in life that we, you know, whether you want to come in, in agreement with it or not, is the thing is it requires a self-analyzation of where each of us are in order to move forward in life because we are our own worst enemy and the thing is by disbelieving the things that we do we sort of restrict ourselves by our own beliefs and curiosity is one thing that puts us outside of our own beliefs and when we unite with things that are outside then they become part of our life as well so um yes and the thing is even like you, you talk about in the beginning one thing i've totally concluded is the thing is it talks about how God raised the Adam up from the ground, from the dirt. Well, the thing is, the way I look at it, I don't know if you guys have heard this from me before, is that if you stop and think about it, you know, all of us are born from, we have to be born from a woman who's, uh, you know, has the egg that was implanted by the sperm to create each one of us. <clears throat> and where does this, where does this come from? The thing is, it comes from our parents who ate the plants and ate the animals that created their body, that created the sperm, that created us. So the thing is, essentially, the way I look at it is the thing is we all come from the ground. And the thing is, when we die, we're all going to go back to the ground in some way, shape, or form. Um, the thing is, people who, like Louise, you know, who become cremated, you know, become the ashes that get thrown back into the earth or whatever somebody does with them. If you get put into the ground, the body decomposes and and, and becomes, becomes a part of the earth, earth. Um, you, know, you know, but the only thing is mankind, mankind sort of interferes and, and, and does this, um, you, you know, know interference, interference in, in, trying in trying to make, make themselves last for a long time, time which goes to their own glory as to what maybe Rami was talking about before. before. So, so the thing is to me, when I look at the idea of being, Adam being coming from the ground, I believe that. Do I believe he was the only one there at that time? No. But, but I do believe it was an event that was used to create names and create words that they can describe uh, order in the world that we live. So go ahead, Rami. All right. Um, a number of different patriarchs were mentioned. I want to want to give props or mention to the phrase you said, Jehovah. That uh, that's sort of a German. Um, you also said how that comes about. It's when you when you apply your own frame to a work, and you don't know whether or not you're viewing it as it was originally intended, as it's written. You would translate it into the Latin letters Y H W H, because in the in the Hebrew language you don't use vowels. And it's true. Uh, the the uh, the the books of Moses, uh, which makes the Pent uh, the Pentateuch the, the Torah. That was a product that came out of a second order um, taking away. Uh, what I mean is, uh, it's generally believed by, by the scholars that, uh, that those were products of, uh, that were produced during Babylonian exile. So uh, prior to Babylonian exile, where the people were hauled off to be slaves in another land, uh, they were exiled or bond servants, whatever, captures, basically human resources or human beings treated as natural resources. Okay, labor. thank you, Yoshi. Come back again. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Oh, we'll see you next time. Next time. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks for, for joining, joining us, us, Yoshi. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Um, so, uh, thanks, the, Yoshi. The, the, so, uh, so, so they, they, they were... were with, they were previously um, uh, hauled off to be to be labor for the Assyrians, 
and that was after they were labor for the Egyptians. So um, the, the, the story of Judaism is 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 a is a story of process, <laughs> and in uh, uh, the the end product is is an idea that that God is one. So if you want to talk about unity, uh, I don't know that um, uh, if if you're if you're talking about cause and effect, if you say God is cause and 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 all of existence is is effect, what you see introduced by way of Judaism is um, when I think of the Bible, I think of the Bible as a, a story in time, the story about time, God, nature, and man, and you see that all in the first verse. In, in the, the beginning, beginning God, God created the heavens. Not, the, not man. man. Man comes later. It's, it's actually uh, uh, time, God, uh, existence, and the vision. The vision. vision. That's so key. Because you, you start right there in the first line, the heavens and the earth. And, and what you see, if you consider the, the Torah as, the, um, as, the, as something that came after a people were for a third time in captivity, stuck in service to others. And you look at, uh, I remember seeing this of, in all places, an episode of Rick and Morty, actually. The, there's, maybe you saw that episode too, but the idea that, uh, that Yah was, was the god of, of Sumer and Wei was the god of Babylon. And, and what, where do we get this name, right? Where do we get this name, Israel? Israel means wrestles with God. So that introduces an idea that goes back to um, actually during the 40 years after, after leaving Egypt before entering into the promised land. What you have is this situation where, um, where Israel, well, where the, where the children of Israel could have, could have this, this presence of God, but, but instead what they get is the promise of God. And that, that's a very key differentiation to, to understand or to get because you can have all the blessings of life and not have the presence of God and the blessings themselves become the means of our own destruction. Well, number one, Rami, I got to tell you, I don't, I don't look at the Bible as a literal thing from through scholars and things of that nature. As I've said before, that's not my way of looking at it. It's sort of like I'm not trying to promote that. I'm not trying to propose that anyone should take such a narrow view either. Well, that to me, that there to me is the Platonic view of Christianity and of Judaism. You know, but the thing is, um, you know, the thing is, I look at them as stories. You know, just like uh, Abraham and Isaac and how he was going to take and sacrifice Isaac. And so what happened, the thing is, all of a sudden he's seen a ram there and he ended up sacrificing the ram instead of Isaac. These here things all relate. But the angel told them not to, not to kill him. So what, what's the, the thing is, and believe it or not, the, the, the most holy day in the Islamic calendar, Eid al-Fitr, which, which was celebrated worldwide yesterday by, by, by Muslims in every time zone is a recounting of that story. Right. Abraham and Isaac and, and, and God providing the, the alternative. But what I'm saying is these things exist not only in the Judaism culture. I mean, there's several other stories that have practical meaning to everyday life. But you take and go into the Greek culture and they got, um, who was it? Um, I can't even think of his name. Oedipus is one of them, and Achilles is another one, you know, where these same events took place, where they were, there was a, a prophecy, a, a belief of something that happened in the mind of a person that eventually did take place. And it's sort of just like I go back to this here thing that happened this past week with the, um, with the fellow in, in Austin, Texas, where he was carrying the AK-47 or whatever it was. And then the thing is, he made the statement that, hey, you know, these people, I'm scared of the cops. I would never aim it at a cop, but the rest of these people are a bunch of scared pussies. And then it didn't bother him. Two days later, he comes across the car with a man in it that had no idea what he said, but he ended up being dead because the guy pulled out a gun and shot him because he felt he was threatened. 
I mean, these things here to me are all of a supernatural state that cannot be looked at in a way that is, um, you know, line by line in order of this or that or whatever, because the thing is when you take and try to scholastically prove that this or that happened, you're no longer part of what's being taught inside of the story of itself. Whereas the thing is, like I say, when you unite through curiosity, and you, you, I'm not even, you, you can't use that in an order of words because it makes no sense. But the thing is, when you apply it to reality, it makes every sense in the world if you're able to see that. You know? David. So there, you have these two divisions where you're, you're going to look at it, you know, as a literal, or you're going to look at it as a, as a parable to life. And the thing you? Christ, I, I love this guy because he tells everybody how to read his words. He says, hey, I, I only speak in parables. So, so you, you better, better take and realize that, that these words are not to be read as a literal document, document but, but these are to be used alongside the events of your life. You know? Can you make sense of the story about in the garden and, and there's this being that, that shows up to Eve? Is he called Lucifer or something like that? It doesn't make any difference what... It doesn't make any difference what, what you what, call What is that? It, it, it does have a mean? third meaning there. What does it mean? It, it's, a figure, I, it's a figure of speech. Yeah, but what is that figure of speech? You love words, David. Uh, so, the figure of speech is the idea of what's on the tree, the forbidden fruit. The forbidden fruit. No, but, 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 but the, the, the temptation comes from, from, the, uh, from the Satan. Satan in the Hebrew language means simply adversary. Right. And in the Hebrew scriptures, it, it, the word Satan is used only twice as a noun, but twice as much. It's used another four more times as a verb. And it's even used in, in like an example, uh, uh, it's written where that word being used as a verb, adversary, to adversary. Uh, an example is, and David. But is, it, is Satan used in the garden uh, story, or is it Lucifer? That's important to know, because maybe it's another being. The, the light bearer. There are only three um, uh, angels mentioned throughout the, the whole of the scriptures. Those three angels are Lucifer, the light bearer, um, and then, of course, uh, Michael and Gabriel. Right. Well, the thing is, number one, you're looking at this, Rami, as a literal document and trying to literally piece things together in an order that's literal. And it's something that cannot ever be done in that fashion. Because it could be important. But it, but it has been done repeatedly in that fashion. But my point is, I'm not looking at it in one interpretation. I've looked at it in several different interpretations. My, my, my method is to apply systems theory to, to practically any, any and everything. And I think, and the reason why I, I mentioned these specific findings, and I, I know it's got to annoy you, David, to a certain degree, because I'm not speaking in questions and answers. It, does, it, it, doesn't annoy set of answers. it doesn't annoy me because I understand the way that the process of most people think about this. And I don't look at it as most people because I look at it through my own individuality. And the thing is, to me, the Bible, whether you're looking at the Old Testament or the New Testament, has to speak to each person individual. And the thing is, when you take and try to take and say that, hey, this means this or that means this, you're looking at it in a literal sense that once again will have no application whatsoever to the individual because there are two different things. And that's the more that we're into. I know she did not just give you but, but David, you're forcing, you're forcing your... No, 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 no. No, 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 you're, you're forcing your story on, on, on the, on the literal writing, but we have to also investigate in a, in a scholarly way what the original people meant by what they wrote down. No, no, that's that not could, true. That no. could be important because their meaning is even more important than what we Want, want to, to give it a meaning. So, so you're, you're giving it your own meaning and, to, uh, and you might be biased towards, towards a certain way, but, but looking at the Old Testament people, they, they, they were the uh, authors that, that put it down. They, they first uh, uh, spoke it. 
they, they had, had their own meaning that we may have lost. We have to seek that also. All right, that's the key. Yeah, yeah if, if I, I if I can, can yeah, I want to comment that this idea of curiosity uh, that, that you had mentioned earlier, earlier I think is, is relevant here, David, that, uh, for example, there may be a Marxist interpretation. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just playing around with the idea of the Garden of Eden. Uh, also, the idea... At, I just, I just, if I may finish, finish the point, point the, the, the idea of uh, what, what I find interesting is, and I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear everyone's idea on this. And I love these mytho this idea of mythology, by the way, or, or uh, the idea of uh, a model or a tool of learning. Uh, you mentioned the word parable. Uh, fascinating. Folklore. Very interesting. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can talk about. These stories do have some... They they, they, they they all reflect reality in one way or another, and there's some uh, art, artistry, some creativity that went along with this. But I think my point is, what about the idea, and, and I'd love to hear Rami's uh, ideas on this, in terms of the, uh, the agricultural revolution. Uh, and, and, and we know that that, I believe, may have occurred, correct me if I'm wrong, Rami, maybe somewhere around... 15,000 years ago in the historical record? What, what, is, the idea, what is the idea of uh, unity? Let's go back to the idea of unity within the Garden of Eden. Is there, is there the presence of the Lord? Uh, I'd love to hear, David, what you have to say in terms of, uh, and you both have so much more information in, from history and from verse, I think, but, but I'd love, love to hear, get the conversation going in terms of what was it like before and after. Does the Garden of Eden have any relevance to our humanity as far as the agricultural revolution is concerned? I've heard this before. Does anyone have any ideas? I have no idea what the agricultural rev revolution is. But I, I do know that, okay, the thing is, you see, the foundation of uh, Judaism and um, Christian, not only Christianity, but say Greek, and also, um, let's see, what is it, Islam, okay? The foundation of all these is a Semitic language. And you hear this word that lives in our lives now, semantics, okay? It's even part of our uh, words that are included in the internet and part of our lives, okay? Semitic represents a language. And the thing is, there were three supposedly original languages, okay, which was... Um, uh, Hebrew, Hebrew, and also, also Arabic, Arabic, and Aramaic. Now, now the, the idea, idea of the whole Bible and everything, to me, evolves around the word Sem, which is, comes from the word Shem. And the word Shem means to have a name. Because without a name for anything, it has no identity. There is nothing there. So the thing is, the idea of um, Judaism is born in the idea of having a name identify an event. Now, the thing is, they use the stories in Genesis to create um, the words, and it even tells you because the thing is, it was given Adam's responsibility to name everything according to its kind. And whether we want to believe it or not, this same sort of thing has carried forth all the way to, to, to the present day. But the only thing is, because we have, we have so, so many, many different, different words to choose from. Oftentimes, Oftentimes these words are used doubly, triply in different ways. For instance, the word mind, the way we think. In Greek, the word is psyche, okay? In Latin, the word is soul. In English, the word is mind. But they all mean exactly the very same thing. But when it's talked about, nobody thinks of the mind as being the psyche. And nobody thinks of the soul as being part of the psyche or whatever. So the thing is, we end up with different definitions for the same thing, okay? So when we're talking to different people, depending upon their understanding of what we're talking about, they will end up with several different ideals and understandings of different words because we have grown so much and there are so many different words that apply to the same thing. But the thing is, when you go to the origination, the ideal of the origination that was created within, the, within Genesis was the idea of naming something according to that reflected the event or that, of that particular thing, whether it be a bird 
a bird, bird flying, or whatever. whatever. So, so names are the foundation for our understanding. And without names, there is no understanding. And if you have the wrong name applied to what you're trying to say, then you have misunderstanding, period. And the thing is that there is where the evil of the world comes in. Just like Eve being tempted to take and partake in the knowledge of good and evil. Well, the thing is good, you have to take a position. Evil, you have to take a position. If there's no evil or no good, and you're looking at it only as something that happens, then the thing is there's no position one way or the other. You're not making a judgment upon. Is good, is good and evil, do they have to exist? Or is it possible to eliminate evil and, the, and there only be good? Like, is it something that is part of, of the universe that has to be there? Or could, could God have eliminated evil? It's not God doing it. It's up to each individual. The thing is, it's a perception. Good and evil is a perception. And, and the thing, thing is, is, if you take and believe in something good, good then you'll stand by it. If you believe it's evil, then you'll stand by that. So you end up taking a position. The reality of it is, is that it has a name. And if you investigate and are curious enough to unite with the, the essence of it, which is looking at both sides of it, then you no longer see a position and you're caught up into the good. So... Anyway. Now that you've exhausted yourself, David, by sharing your perspective with regard to these matters, are you ready to leave or stick around? Yeah, you're right. Bobby, you know me. I'm usually good for an hour and a half, but I've been on here for two and hours and 15 minutes. Yeah, you're right. I, I think I'm ready to leave. But um, once again, it's been something that's very enjoyable because I have to get going. I have things to do today, you know, so... Um, It'd be really nice to pick up this same conversation and look at it in different aspects because... Yes, I, I hope to continue this with uh, investigating good and evil. Well, uh, yeah, like I say, I believe it's a perception. Right. Uh, the the, the follow-up for one of uh, Nietzsche's other books was Beyond Good and Evil, which was, I think, central to his thesis, which probably borrowed a bit from the Stoics. But uh, he was so concerned with truth. What is truth? amongst all these these frameworks i mean how do you how do you remove the frame and see reality as it is well i tell you what rami you take and keep that in mind and i think that is a super super good topic but like i say I, i've got to get out of here right now so i i think that this will be a third breakfast up sometime uh, next week or whatever david david good seeing you thank you it was a pleasure Thank, thank you, you from uh, thank, thank you. you. I'm happy to hear that you're in the twelve step program. No, you need that. We're make it up. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Okay, okay we'll take it. Uh, talk, talk to y'all later. Okay. okay. All right, David. Bye. -bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, David. That was good. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, Rami, Rami, what are your thoughts on on? on uh, you know, what are, what are some of your interests? I mean, I, I, I really enjoy uh, listening to what you have to share. You have, uh, you're so well read. And uh, I've spent most of, too much of my time, much of, uh, most of my energy. Uh, my, my initial studies when I went to NIU here in Chicago, uh, I was fascinated with labor studies, labor history. Uh, literature, and uh, did you believe other... Henry George? Henry Ford? No, no in Henry George. Did you read Henry George, the guy who kicked off the American Progressive Movement? The American uh, what? Progressive Movement, the, the, the thing that lasted from about. 1895 or so, maybe you can date it. You can certainly date it much sooner, but so the, known it, the period generally described as the progressive era in America was from about five years before the 20th century for, and then into the next 20 years, the first 20 years there of it. I'm reading a fascinating, I, I have a, it's funny, I, I have a book written by Cooper called Pivotal Decades. I just pulled it out. I, I, it goes back to my college days, and, uh, the years 1900 to 1920, and 
you know, just by flipping it open, it seems like there's so much relevance going on right now. For example, one of the, uh, and we could go on and on about that, but uh, um, I, I think the point, the point I wanted to bring up is, is that it sounds like you've done a great deal of studying, and I respect that a great deal, and, and I'm curious about uh, you and, and, and what you have to share. Every time you talk, you, you, you really have a lot of great information. I mean, it's fascinating to me. Um, I, I could go, go on and on, and, and, and but, but I, I would be interested, to, we were talking about the Garden of Eden and perhaps the relationship between capital, the relationship between agri agriculture and, and economics, and, and there are many interpretations to that myth, if you will, but, uh, and what does it speak to the individual, but what are your thoughts on perhaps the Garden of Eden and also your understanding of history and human development and societies and civilizations, what's happening is, is there, there a relationship there, there between, between the, the, the idea of uh, uh, forming civilization, civilization, which is, I think, what the Garden of Eden maybe is, 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 is expressing, that there's a division, right? That we have to go out and we, 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 there's, a, there's a shift. I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. Well, the idea of, um, so now we're getting into the division between, uh, let's say, Judaism and Christianity. And the ideal in the Judaic outlook is that um, the world exists, it is ours, and our job is to doctor it into being in Eden again by our own will. The, the idea, the, 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 the end for, for the Christian is to inherit the new world which is a different sort of idea. It could be this planet, it could be the new earth made out of the same substance as the old earth, but it is, it is, it is earth, universal, available to all mankind, not just one branch of humanity. So let me ask you a question, then, that's wonderful. So if I understand what you're saying, then Christianity would be, for lack of a better word, more of the, the idea of what is to come. And... Uh, in, 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 in as, as far as, as something, something new, new. Uh, and, and Judaism would be what has been and to be able to, to regain that or, or, or to rebuild, well, there's, to rebuild there's, that. There's a, there's a very strong um, ethic within the Judaic faith and it, it's indoctrinated in, into, the, into the followers, even those who would say that they don't believe in God. Let's say there, there are a number of Jews who would say that God is um, neither here nor there that does not exist, would be a construct of the mind and nothing more. It's like saying, it's like saying mornings don't exist. <laughs> it's clearly like um, so many of the founding fathers of this country had it, had it in themselves and in ways they were in themselves. Uh, walking contradictions. There's, there's a contradiction there. But that, that is what Israel means. Jacob got this name Israel because he wrestled with God. Mm. There's, there's the, the difference, difference between wrestling with God and and uh, submitting to God. You know, that's, that's the difference between a Jew and a Muslim. A Muslim, Muslim submits to God. Uh, a, a, a Jew thinks that he can wrestle with God and get God's blessing through the process. <clears throat> it, 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 it affects your, your whole method for approaching life. <laughs> the universe and everything. What would what would uh, perhaps uh, a behavior or you know uh, whether it's individual or societal, how would that manifest itself in both uh, uh, Islam and Judaism? How are those how are those different uh, uh, say if you will structures beliefs? Manifest, manifest themselves in, in an individual. Right. Well, let, let me start, start by saying that, that um, to each, the, the blessing is there. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, 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 I've been, been to the homes of sheiks and princes in, in the Saudi Kingdom. And uh, these are multi-story, four or five-story mansions set aside for family and their staff. And uh, uh, with, with hundreds 
people either sitting at a short table on carpets or European style tables. I want my everything legal. That's right. Uh, I will make you an English muffin. And uh, 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 so, so, so the the blessing is available by either in by other means. Okay. I, 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 I also have a have a mother. Uh, uh, what's that called? Uh, not a mother in law, but a, uh, a stepmom who grew up in Syria who went to visit her ancestral home, which is currently mostly within the state of Israel. And, and she was sympathetic for the Jews there because she saw people with not very much freedom were living under, uh, who didn't have that much money. <laughs> and, and it was just, no, it's so heavily promoted in the media yes, here, but it's, it's, it's really just a form of socialism <laughs> because the story also of the common theme throughout the, uh, the Hebrew scriptures is, 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 this, is this fascination between prophets who are... Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, you mentioned something, you said a what between prophets? Oh, uh, it's a vacillation between... Vacillation between prophets. Between, between the prophets. Prophets? Prophets, not, not, not money prophets, prophets, but people who are speaking sure, God's words unto the people. Yes. And idolatry. Idolatry, idolatry meaning hey, false God. gods. The, 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 the end statement for the Jews, it, the unifying statement is, Hear, O Israel, O God is one. <laughs> meaning, it was because of the one God that we went into the Egypt, and it was because of the one God that we got captured by the Assyrians, and it was because of the one God that we got captured by the Babylonians. And in, in our process of wrestling or, or somehow becoming free, these artifacts, have, such as the Bible, have, or, or the Old Testament at least, have, have, have been produced. You stop you can't stop running your mouth. Oh, your English muffin, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm also a waiver. Yeah, yeah you've, you've got, got your hands full. I, I respect that. Where's the English muffin? Um, uh, if, you if you could, could ask, ask a question. question. I, I, during, during some, some of our previous conversations, conversations I, I, I can't help but think that, that uh, and what, what I'm interested in and where I, I, I think we have a relationship here is, is some of your ideas on economics, right. uh, yeah, labor study, study and yeah, um, can, can we, can we go, go to the, the idea of what the Garden of Eden represents in terms of a core myth in our culture and, and the, the idea, idea of, uh, no, let, let me just propose, propose this, that we have a certain nativism or tribalism within the Garden of Eden, and maybe tribalism, excuse me, or the idea of a communal relationship, a oneness with, the, uh, uh, with, uh, with nature. And uh, there's been a division, a shift, and... Uh, so what's interesting is, is that you talked about uh, in Judaism, the idea of returning to that, uh, that oneness with that idea of a kibbutz, that idea of a community. I'll throw that out there. Uh, I'm getting a little bit off track, but I guess the question is, what's the, what's the economic interpretation of the Garden of Eden to you? In terms of, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, communal, economic versus... Uh, rugged, rugged individualism, individualism let's say yeah, i would i would say that it was um that it's that's that's a story of what occurs when man takes the task of judging too soon to me it's an allegory so it's like you know this is great and all and i uh, you know uh, i get to walk with god and i get to i get to Put, put names on, on label things. things. <laughs> I, I get to claim them all as my own, except, except for, uh, what, what is that? that? There's, there's, there's a tree of, of life or a tree of, of, uh, of the knowledge, good and evil. Taking the, the I think I, I read it at least as an allegory of believing, first of all, the adversary to creation. <laughs> uh, because, because the, the adversary, adversary 
in in himself believed that that he, the bearer of the light, was the like there's something intoxicating about knowledge. You, you think, oh, I know it all. I, I think I think Marx was um, in love with his ideas, and it became an idol that 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 led to you know how many tens of millions of deaths uh, because because really when when you get into an ism meaning your, your thoughts spread, spread to others, others then, then then what you're doing is creating an idol and and and, and, and when, when you, you follow, follow idols that's when darkness is set yeah. in wow. there's, there's a, a lot, lot here, here. Uh, the, the idea, idea of the original sin, sin. That's, that's a phrase, a phrase that's used, used that there was a decision that was made, made. Uh, a, a breaking, breaking of a law, law. correct was, was this, well, the, this was this, uh, <laughs> it just just it, it, it's more of a matter of trust okay trust uh trust right because yeah. uh, uh sometimes we trust our eyes more than we trust our ears and what, what i mean by ears is is, is is hearing the right thing and departing from it and 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 certainly america for instance has a history of doing everything wrong before it eventually comes to what is right um, but but, but we're, we're at least, you know, I think that the quicker that we fail on all the wrong things is, is probably going to be the path to, that, that'll lead us to, to finding or establishing or, or, or actually agreeing upon what is right. Wow. Let me ask you a question based on, and let's just shift to that then in terms of current events. Are you saying that, uh, are we headed in the right direction as, as a species? Are we heading in the right direction as a species? Well, um, and, and, we and by right direction, I guess I should define that. Uh, let's define that in terms of just health. Sure. Um, well, true health understands that That is something in my environment is unhealthy, and that environment makes up part of the food chain, then eventually I or some of my relatives will become unhealthy as a product of, of that thing in the environment, which is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So then it brings up the, the, um, the, the question, and, and I'm just going to employ division, because division, divide and conquer is the method that, that, uh, that was uh, really turned into a science throughout Europe. Uh, you have a problem, you divide it, and then you conquer it. Maybe, maybe that's universal throughout the entire globe. I mean, certainly it is today. But uh, uh, is it is it a moral problem, or is it a or is it a problem of nature? Um, and then you can get into a whole series of versus paradigms. Uh, something we talked about before you came on board was the idea of we're constantly being told to choose, or uh, let's say capitalism or communism, or uh, in, in reality, reality all industrialized, industrialized nation states operate using some hybrid. So they, they use some features of, of, uh, of socialism and some features of capitalism, all to just varying levels. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, uh, so it's interesting. I was listening to a uh, commentary last night. Uh, David, I believe David. Oh God, not David. David. David uh, he, he writes, writes uh, I think, for the Post. Anyway, anyway he was taught. He was discussing how, if, if Biden is elected, this, this would have to be a a, a, a combination of, an, of 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 the New Deal and something, something else. I forget what uh, what, what he had mentioned, but sweeping social change uh, is. Uh, what is maybe ushered in uh, that we're being forced right now? This is a there, there are this. Let me ask you this: We talked about the early 20th century, the early 21st century, Rami. There's a, there, there's a, there, there are massive currents that are taking place, and is this the point at which we? Bernie Sanders, for example, uh, 
socialism. The, uh, we're mentioning both of these. Are we seeing that rugged individualism and capitalism failing in the face of the, uh, the pandemic? Let me, ask, let me say this. In my opinion, Amazon... Take that, sorry. Amazon, Amazon should, should have come, come out right, right away and, and delivered masks to every. This is my. This is from a business perspective, and I'm in business. Looking back on this, and by the way, I was at a conference in Las Vegas at the end of February, the beginning of March, looking at the World Health Organization website right before I hopped onto the plane, wondering if I should go uh, to the conference, which was the Cremation Association of North America conference in Las Vegas. And uh, I said to the individuals at our booth, I said, it would have made a whole lot of sense for us to quickly buy masks with our logo on them right away. Being an entrepreneur, uh, I'm a capitalist. Um, my mother, by the way, is a refugee from Germany during the Holocaust. Uh, uh, she's Jewish, and, uh, but she thought it would be a good idea to raise the kids Catholic. Long story, a lot of humor here, great Jewish humor. Um, so the point is, is that, uh, what is the point? Um, oh, it would have made sense, I think, for Amazon to be able to come out and to be able to take charge of this. We probably should have had, that. We, we, this country would have been, this country would have been better suited if, if we, we would pay, pay people to, to wear, wear masks, masks pay them to wear masks, pay them to stay home. This should have been what we did. This is what we understand. We don't, we don't understand very well when the government tells us to do something. It's just not in our nature. But I'll tell you what, if you would have paid people to stay home and wear a mask, we would have had, we, and, and made it competitive. You know, you know, the United, United States, States, look at us in the Olympics, for crying out loud. Nobody's, nobody's better. We, we should have, we should have shifted, shifted right away. We're, we're not, we're, we're not into this idea of government coming in. Some of us did. Some of us believed it. We said, hey, this is great. This is government's opportunity to step in. What happened? Trump came in. He's a pure salesman. He's a salesman. Love him or leave him, I don't care. But he, this is what he does. He's a salesman. If he would have said, listen, here's what we're going to do, folks. Let's make some money off of this deal. That's, That's what, what he should have done. done. That's, That's what he was trying to do. And I'm, I'm not backing him at all. I'm just saying he was trying to save Wall Street and all this stuff because that's the only thing that he understands, really. I'll, okay, I'm going off a little bit. But my point is, is that if Amazon was smart, they would have come out, they would have sent masks to everybody in the country right away, put the logo on it, and pay people to stay home and wear them. Anyway, that's my two cents. What do you think about that, Rami? Uh, I'm sending I'm sending you a link to an incentive-based constitution for the United States. This was the product of about a hundred people in the workshop in Boston about uh, ten years ago, and uh, one guy his name is Jonathan. Can you send it to my email? I don't know how to get this thing off this chat. Does it go away? Oh, it, it should. It, 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 well, you can save the chat. You should see three dots. There should be a ellipse in the lower right-hand corner. But yeah. don't save it yet because I'm up to an incentive based constitution for the United States. All I see is chat nine, meeting settings, minimize. Top chat. Pardon me? Tap chat. Top chat. Oh, I got it. All right. And then there should be three dots in the lower right hand corner that allow you to save. And then you'll have the, the, the chat from the time that you entered the, the conversation. Okay. That is awesome. Good deal. Sorry about that. To interrupt. Okay. Uh, so uh, he, he actually, um, as a way to have it published online, was um, there's a law that says every communication sent to the Federal Reserve has to be recorded and be made publicly available. So he just emailed it to the public reserve as a comment, and then went back and found it with a search engine. There it is, uh, hosted by the by 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 the. Uh, some, there's a certain irony in that the the. The seed of one system's destruction can be planted within the system itself. Uh, if there's any sense behind that statement, so I don't know how you feel about the, the Federal Reserve System. It is a federal system. It is a it is a, a governmental system, but it's it's one with with its own authority, and that authority I think is primarily 
the, the authority that was that was vested in Congress up to about 107 years ago. It's uh, in the in the in our current Constitution. It's Article One, Section Eight, the second clause. The the power of uh, of Congress to coin. Um, the uh, uh, no, not to coin. That's uh, that's 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 the fifth clause of, of Section Eight. It's the it's the power of Congress to borrow. Against, against the, the name, name of the United States, States of America. Bobby. There you go. Bobby. And uh, he, he, he went, went ahead and created, well, he compiled it, but uh, the, the workshop created this group. And, and he's been spending the last 10 years reviewing and asking requests for uh, comments. Is there a way to do it better? Uh, there you go. Bobby. Yes, why? I don't know there's cheap water at Target. Oh, there's cheap water at Target. And the way you get to the cheap water at Target? See if you want it first. Oh, if you want, if you need water, I don't know, I don't know how you're doing. Uh, there's a way to to get it much cheaper if you purchase it online to reserve it. What you do is you set your home store to what, what town? Willberry. Is it in it? Waterbury. You set you set your your hometown to Waterbury, Connecticut. You choose. The water. You, you purchase the water, it locks it in on a lower price, and then you swap over to your actual uh, local target, and then the, the price carries with you because you've already paid for it. Waterbury, Connecticut. Yes, because, and, and this is interesting, in Waterbury, Connecticut, when you buy like 360 in water, there's a dollar bagging fee, plus another 460 uh, uh, tax, I guess. I guess, I guess they're, they're taxing bottled water in that state. Or Rami, in this is fascinating because what you, a uh, good friend of mine who I wish was on this, he would say we are living science fiction. And and the fact that if, we, if this were 1982, 1983, this, what is happening right now, would have been... My, my, my wife was also moving. Thank, 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 thank your wife for me because this is fantastic information. Well, thank my, her. My, my, my wife also says water. Uh, if you want to, if you want to PayPal her, we we will go ahead and pick up the water. We'll purchase it and deliver it to you. And <laughs> it's Target brand, twenty four bottles. So we'll, we'll we'll just pack our own fee, but it'll still cost you less than going out yourself. Thank you. Yeah, because we got a hurricane yeah. bearing down on us soon. Oh, goodness. Well, what I'm saying. He can send you the PayPal info. Okay. As my friend John Sazanoff would say, uh, who I, I, he would say, we are living science fiction. And this is the fact that you and I are having this conversation and we're talking about getting water uh, online and doing all these wonderful things. It's just absolutely fascinating that I'm on, that we're doing this right now. And it's leading up to this imagine, 10 to 20 years. Oh, yeah, we, we paid. And this is good for all month. Uh, who was it doing it? It was just last month, last night for this particular restaurant. We, we found a, a set of restaurants. We were able to have a full dinner delivered to us for how much? One dollar seventy-one cents. One dollar and seventy-one cents. How how did you do that? How did you do that? <laughs> through, through who? Uh, last night it was Hat Island. Hat Island, but what was the delivery service? Uh, DoorDash. DoorDash. Yeah. It's fascinating. I'm just that good. Yeah, we we had a nice uh, green curry for dinner. <laughs> Fifteen dollar meal for dollar seventy one. Is that dollar seventy nine? Dollar seventy one. Okay. Wow. The, that's uh, great. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there's, there's something called the third industrial revolution. Jeremy Rifkin wrote a book about it, and it's that uh, everything in terms of the material goods uh, that the price is approaching to zero. Zero. To the point of being negligible. That is already the point of, of how advanced our industrialization is. Now, it's hard for most people to feel that because uh, the goods have been primarily monopolized since the early 70s. Basically, since electronic voting was installed in the halls of Congress, removing, removing the... Um, uh, you, you understand the, the, the reason why we have the secret ballot? Yeah, so, that we can't, so that we can't like go to someone who paid us in advance and give them a receipt to show that we... 
I mean, it could say that we voted, but not. it doesn't say who we voted for. That was going on prior to the establishment of the secret ballot throughout the United States. So hold on, that's interesting. But so what was happening and what year is that? What, what was the... Uh, the uh... Until uh, it, it, the, the secret ballot was established in the late 19th century. Prior to that, um, uh, part of the political machine, part of the campaign progress process is you would buy your votes with liquor or, or sometimes just with money. Here, go. Go, go vote, vote and show us, you know, yeah. make sure that you voted. And, and there's, there's also the whole, you know, vote, vote like this, this then shave and then vote again. again. That was happening too. But, and, and there's this wonderful scene, you can YouTube it, um, uh, uh, Gangs of New York voting. And you'll find at the very end, it, it describes Tammany Hall and that whole political uh, election machine. Uh, at the end, it's not, it's not who casts the ballots, it's who counts them. <laughs> who counts them, them that, that, that determine the election. election. So uh, today what we have is a series of, of black boxes that, I mean, how, how proprietary is, is addition? And, and yet, and yet we've got these highly exploitable devices, devices, even to the point that we, if you know anything about <laughs> computer programming, it's, it's been found, found that the system, system that all the systems operate on, they, they use a, a shared sort of database form, their, their data type is currency to record votes. Now, the, the, the problem with using a currency data type to record what is essentially an integer value, there's a difference between um, uh, the number one and the number 1.32 or 1.34. What they do in their display is they only show the part to the left of the, um, of the, uh, of the, of the decimal point, but, but the way it's, it's recorded, recorded and transmitted, transmitted is all as currency. So, so that, that means you can stick your thumb on either end. Rami's wife. For all races. Rami's wife. Is this the bottled water? Is that the bottled water, Stacy? Yes. That is it. Yeah, that's the stuff. Does that make sure I should be at? Waterbury? Yeah. Connecticut? Yep. Yep. There you go. Is that a, is that a good price? What well, you tell me? What is the price? I can't see it. Dollar seventy nine. is what she was paying for those packs. So when you add it to your cart, you should. Yep, there it is. Be sure to be sure to switch your store back. Are you going to Waterbury today? Yeah, yeah. I got a, after you've made the purchase, then switch your store back to Waterbury. Well, hold, hold on. What is, is it? You make the, you make the first. Do you, you stick it in the cart? Then yes. change your store back. Stick in the cart. I'll walk in through it. Stick in the cart. How many ever you want? Take in the card. Ah, uh, they're limiting now. Last night we were able to order three or four. Now they're down to two. Take in the card. Where is that? Add to your cart. How do we do that? Is there a cart in the upper right hand corner, maybe? Oh, I wish I could do this for him. Add to it. Oh, oh look. look. Yeah, click, click on, on add, add to registry. registry. There you go. Is, Is that, that it? Add to registry or add to cart? Add to cart. Add, add to cart should be somewhere there. there. There's no add to cart. Let me see. You may have to do it through the target app. Oh, oh, you may have to. Oh, you have to do it through the target app. It's an exploit oh. because they. It was one of those undiscovered corner cases before they released that version of the app. And at some point, they may patch it so that you can no longer utilize this exploit. So you have to do it through the target app. That's the key. There's a there's a there's an actual local to Orlando, Florida area uh, a YouTuber called One Cute Couponer, and she just does all these deals. She'll go into a CVS and clear out. Yeah, she, she's how we how we got dinner for for buck seventy one delivered to our home. Rami. Yeah. Rami. Yeah. Can, Can I get your opinion, opinion on I'll the very the very current topic of mail-in mail -in voting? voting? This, this is this is, is at the top of uh, current, current events, events in this country, country. Uh, and, and a lot, lot of people are very concerned about this. this. We're, We're very, very concerned, concerned because uh, oh, mail-in mail voting, which which. One, One of the, the big concerns, concerns is, in fact, fact that, that uh, there will there will be there will be dispute, and it will delay 
if it's a if it's a close if it's a close election, it will delay the uh, the winner. What are your thoughts on? All the elections are close. Have you noticed that? I'm gonna look for my mailing. Vote. There hasn't been a landslide since since Nixon with Walter Mondale. Let me see if I can go to Target. Um, and you mean Reagan? And, uh, was it Reagan? Oh yeah, Reagan Mondale. I was thinking of um, who, who who Amy Goodman described him as the bright McGovern. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I had to do this. I I opened up the the sample ballot that came. My wife got it, and my uh, my mother got it, and I'm the only guy who's like willing to. Where's my ballot? I think in the family voting for the for the woman with the PhD. Yaro, I thought you were in Spain. You guys are doing mail-in as well? Uh, uh, Lawrence is from Spain. Oh, you're in Florida? Uh, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. not in I'm Spain, in Yaro? Uh, I'm in Florida. Florida. A Spanish name. Well, I know. I thought, okay. Well, okay. We, I thought we, you were, were a, we were a protector of Florida for a while. The only person that came here that was in Spain was Francisco. Okay. 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 Is, is is David in Florida too? too? Not that it matters, yeah. but everybody down there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There was, uh, was in Japan. So Rami, what are your thoughts on that? On on this this election coming up with the mail in? With your his, with your knowledge of the past. Okay. Well, uh, I lost I'm gonna, my mailing. I'm give you the ten thousand foot view. <laughs> okay. I I need that. Give me the big picture. All right. Well, the, the big picture is we have two, two right-wing political parties, okay? We have, but, but then we have a frame that has decreased the view of what, a, what, what is allowable political perspective, and it's been placed so as to make it look like there's a differentiation. Yeah, right. That's fascinating. Okay. I mean, I've, I've heard, heard that described, described before, before, by the way, that, that you know, that, 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 that Eisenhower's Republican Party would be more left than today's Democrats. Yes. Because is the whole country's been moved to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and uh, if, you, if you know Randolph Bourne, the famous um, cultural critic from the, from the early 20th century. Okay, you got the process? Send it to him. Record it on your phone. Okay. He'll, he'll figure it out. He's a smart guy, as long as he's using the app. It's not the app. I did it on the website. Oh, through the website you did even. Okay. I'm sorry. What's more important, having this conversation or saving a few cents? I'm trying to find my mail. Five dollars. Okay. Uh, so Randolph Bourne, he, he actually passed away after the, or during the flu pandemic of 1819 or 1818, 1819. This is part of his uh, untimely papers, uh, but uh, you can go to uh, fairuse.org and just search Randolph Bourne, the state. He is the guy, it was in that, in that work uh, that we get the phrase, uh, war is the health of the state. And he was thinking of the country during World War I, okay, and that's at its conclusion too. So he found that um, the, the way that the politics really works is that you've got these two parties, and, and the fight is the focus on the parties. And, and war enables, because he's probably thinking back at least to 1898, but you can go all the way back to the conversion of the country from the articles of confederation over to the constitution of the United States, which is what enabled us to have a standing military and to have um, manifest destiny so that you can live where you're living right now. And, and so that by the by, by, by the time of the, the 1850s, in between two different presidencies, you have Commodore Perry going as far as, as, as launching cannon fire into Edo Bay, what is today Tokyo, to get Japan to open up trade with the West. All, this, all these things occurred. Uh, and so that today, even, you've got the unified uh, command responsibilities, and the entire globe is... Uh, is, 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 is actually been divided across 11 different United States Department of Defense agencies from U.S. CITCOM, U.S. NORTHCOM, U.S. SOUTHCOM, U.S. AFRICOM, U.S. European COM, U.S. Uh, uh, PACCOM uh, for, for Asia Pacific. Really? Also U.S. SPACECOM. So we have... 11, there are 11 sectors. 
Oh, no, there are there there, there are North, North America, America, South America, America Middle East, East uh, or whatever. The, the, the number doesn't America, matter, but it's divided up. It's divided. But but, the, but there, the, it's divided up in two basic ways. There are the uh, the ways that are responsible for certain territories, including U.S. SpaceCom, and there are also functional areas: U.S. Special Forces, U.S. Uh, transportation to move stuff around between them all. Uh, uh, U.S. Cyber Command and U.S. Strategic Command. So the, there are conceptual and territorial uh, different divisions of this aspect. And we're, we're being the one global superpower, we become um, like what my grandfather went and took a bullet in the leg for a police action in in, in Korea, uh, an issue that, that that still to this day we have this war of attrition over, because and my friend. Um, Johnson Press, uh, he goes by chance. He's the guy who actually compiled that constitution I gave you. He's actually the son of Don Press, who was a, a, a famous um, uh, mover and shaker in the uh, American Jewish sort of peace movement. And he spent time uh, studying um, uh, the whole Israeli Palestinian um, situation. Uh, so, Mr. Press. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, he says that uh, that the, the, the Marxists, Marxists are a billionaire's best friend because we need we need enemies because with an enemy you can unite. <laughs> so and, and when you when you think about the history of, of of the Soviet Union, for instance, they they applied their ideology in such a way that they killed all the farmers who knew how to farm in the Ukraine, for instance. So they, they, they created famines through policy, and if it wasn't for Hoover, before he became president, actually shipping United States grain over to Russia, you probably wouldn't have even had a Soviet Union. Hi. <laughs> because Hi. So, so we actually subsidized this process. You know, we privatized the goods, and then we socialized the externalities and the costs. Hi. So you, you cannot have... Walmart no, or an Amazon. I did. Um, I did see your son. And you could not have an internet either. With, with, well, you know, it's like Walmart being being given in-store instruction for how to sign up for food stamps and Medicaid or Medicare. Yeah, Medicaid is the one. This is Ezekiel. Hi, Ezekiel. You can't hear me. I'm, I'm speaking through my head. Rami, I'm going to let you go because I know you've got. I want to talk more though. Uh, about, about this. this. I've, I've got, got to run to, I've, I've got, got some of my family as well. I've got, I've got four children. children uh, well, so I, uh, uh, I appreciate Thank you, Mike. I hope to see you guys. I wish we could talk more, more every day. So um, we, we have other things. Save, save the chat because there are links to resources. And I still don't know how to do it, Rami. I don't know how to do it. Okay. I'm, I'm so you tap chat in the lower right hand corner. Do you see three dots? I'm on my phone, so it's not coming up. Oh, it may be different. I'll send you links. Oh, let me save the chat and then I'll just send you the chat. All right, great. And here's my phone number, by the way. Feel free, you guys call me anytime. Okay. Well, we can do Facebook or FaceTime or whatever the heck that is. After you popped it in, I will save the chat again. I'm going to throw my phone number in here. I'm more of a phone guy. I'm a business guy, so I, I, I'll do. Here's my phone number. And, and here's mine. This, this is great because it's actually embedded in the address. Cairo, being such a smart guy and having such a wonderful phone number, made that his specific uh so anytime you want to hop on zoom it has the same phone number there we go send me a text, send me a text. let me know what's going on i'm on the phone all the time you know this is an interesting era we're in and i'm so glad that we we're friends because we can share things and help one another out you're helping out with target and whatnot but you know it's interesting it's interesting by the way and i'll leave you with this as a business guy it's interesting the people that we help and, and who we help. help. And, and, and I don't think I asked the question, why am I helping? Why am I helping these people? That's an interesting question for me to ask, Rami, and I think we can help one another. I have a feeling we can. Okay? All right. All right. Yaro, good seeing you, man. Thank you. All right, peace.
See you, See you next Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. <laughs> All right, Hyro. It's, it's you and me and now. Do we want to practice? Uh, <laughs> well, well, not, not only, but uh, do you want to practice uh, or, or like do um, uh, figure out what we have to do so that um, we'll be good to go on the 20th? For, for the big, big picture, picture. You want to get the water uh, or how, the, how to how to make you like uh, be able to use this same account? How do you do that, or, or become an assistant? Monthly or annually? It's uh, it's not really my business, but I'm I'm asking anyway. You don't want to. I paid I paid for I think I paid for a a year. Okay, okay, so you're, you're good, good for the year from the time that you paid. paid. Good. So you so locked in the lower price. Maybe, maybe it was six months. Well, I forget. Okay. Right there. Well, well, for, for sure, sure I think it will be available from the 20th of right uh, August. Yeah. 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 She wanted me to show you um, yeah. No, that's not the app. That's the website. Oh, what, what does the button say? Add to cart. Add to cart. That's the button that she gets when she accesses it through the phone. I'm sorry. Let's see. The, um, trying to help do it out. Yeah. And do, do you uh, do you uh, find do you first the first step is to uh, change it to Waterbury and then find the product? That's right. And then there should be an add to cart button along the way. So you might have to switch browsers. Oh. She's ready to remote into your machine and just do it. Right <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, you, you have, have it through, through your phone. phone. You might want to do it through, if you have an, an Android phone. That's my, what my wife has been doing it successfully through. Just using the phone's browser. Is, it, is that Google Chrome that you're using? She's using Chrome browser on an Android phone. Yeah. Add to cart. It's working for her. see. Where's my Google Chrome? Go and do it again and just pick it up at our store and drop it off to him. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I was also trying to find a way to get out of the house today. I, that's the no, I already have a way. I've already got ours over. Oh, that's right. We're going to go pick ours up from East Colonial. You have to take it up. But he's way out there in the northwest somewhere. You have to take Water, water, berry. Connecticut. Connecticut. What a long name. <laughs> Connecticut, right? Set Where does the name come from? Probably, Probably a native name. name. Yeah, the Aboriginals. You know, the, the 20 uh, families. Was it 10 or 20 families who came over from Asia? Uh, purified water. 179. Mm. Quantity. Let's see if I can put two. I don't know. Where, Where does it show, show add to registry? registry. It's, it's not, not add to registry. registry. It should, you, you, you need a button that says add to cart. A, a red room. button. You don't even have to click on the maybe, water. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I, I, I should go, go to another store in Waterbury. <laughs> uh, does it have to well, take up? It. Yes. It, it has to be a store that says pick up. I think you're right about that. Yeah, it has to be a pickup store. Yeah, it has to be a pickup store. That is the key. Purified water. Only at Target. See in your state. In stock water berry. Yes, dear. Well, here's an interesting question. Um, what if, what if getting excited about bottled water really isn't a great idea? What if what we're really doing is supporting the petroleum industry. It is what? What if getting this bottled water and being excited about getting a, a better price of the bottled water isn't a good idea? What if what we're really doing is consenting to a highly subsidized petroleum industry? You know, that same industry that gets 10 times the subsidy that, that the American people spend. Ten times the amount as they spend on education. Mm. Maybe what we're doing is perpetuating evil by getting caught up in the process and then mm. we're validating bottled water as a solution to thirst. Mm. 
Oh, oh my gosh, gosh I have. We, we are, are online, online waiting for you. you? There's, There's a. a... What, what time, time is it? There... Uh, I said. I said, I said the, the meeting was. Generation where you just like to spend money as much as you can whenever you can. What are you talking about? It's you said it may be wrong to get the water at a good price. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, maybe the better solution is to um, just have a really um, highly accessible water supply, and if you don't like the taste of the water. The, the raw ingredients to be able to process the food supply that you have into a really good water. Here's a clue. You can't get that before the hurricane comes. Well, I understand that, Lee. You're, you're speaking uh, in the immediate, but I'm speaking also in the long term. If, 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 okay, so let, let's say expediency or political expediency is, is the... That's how Trump was elected. That's how Trump was elected, my wife says. Is it still there, Harold? Hopefully not. Let me see. Yeah, it. Oh, back to meeting. No, no. Hey, it's just going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Bye. All right. Are you happy? You do realize. Be able to hear it? No, that's not it. 